This might be a little bit loud. I apologize. <laughs> Because Nick told me to. Yeah. Oh, hey! How do I clap? There it is. Hello and welcome, everybody. Welcome and hello. Today is Mother Truckin' Thursday, which means, yeah, Mother Truckin' Vlog Day. That's four words that I just really enjoy saying. I always look forward to Vlog Day. I appreciate you guys being here. We're on YouTube at the moment. There is also an emote chat in Twitch that I really want everyone to just try out. If you're on Twitch, just throw some emotes in the chat and see what happens. Oh, there's an echo, yeah. Then now there's an echo. Now there's no more echo. Well, look, it's it's a grim green YouTube channel. It's a grim green stream. Of course, there's going to be dangle clacks left and right. I saw that uh, DJ Mattress is here. DJ Mattress, king size, king size. Um, EB Sting, I saw you there in the chat. I cannot stop laughing about Scrap Jake Wood. <laughs> or Scrap Jake. What did you say? Scrap Jack Wood? <laughs> dying, bro. Dying. I was dying at how funny that was. But if you're over on Twitch and you're watching on Twitch, then there should be uh, a little Twitch emoji chat. And if you leave a ch if you leave an emoji, let's see if I leave a bunch of purple fire. Oh, look at that. Purple fire appears magically floating on the screen. If it gets too annoying, we'll we'll take it we'll take it off, but man, that's funny. Nick. Freaking Nick. 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 Three Nick. There's a lot of Nick. There's a lot of Nick happening right here. A lot of Nick going on right now. Uh well, hello and welcome you guys. Sorry, I'm getting way off track. Let me do a real quick rundown as far as what's coming up tonight, what you can expect in tonight's live stream. Uh of course, we're going to do a beer. You know that that goes without saying. We have some assignment Americas, we have some what I've been vapings, we have some retro vapings. Uh we're going to throw some news and advocacy in there. 15 minutes of uh Matt Sinister Memorial news and advocacy. Uh absolutely, no questions asked. There's just been a lot going on. Australia, man. Australia's just full of liars. Present company completely excluded. But man, Australia's just full of liars. We'll talk about it in the news. Um, I do have a bunch of mail. And if there's something in the mail I can set up, I will absolutely set it up. We're going to do Getting to Know Grim. We're going to have a very random liquid tasting. Boosh 9000. Here we go. Let's get into this. Thank you guys for being here. In fact, there's one thing I just want to say right out of the uh, top of the stream here outside of the news and advocacy, and that is tomorrow is the American Vapor Manufacturer's live stream Q&A with CTP Director Brian King. This is huge. This is a big deal. This is a gigantic deal, floating bushes. This is a gigantic deal. This is the new director of the FDA Center for Tobacco Products engaging with stakeholders in this industry and answering questions from stakeholders in this industry. I'll put a link in the description to where you can register to watch it. If you don't want to do that, you can also tune in right here on this YouTube channel tomorrow, I think it's 10 or 10.30 a.m. I'll be streaming it as well on this YouTube. So you can watch it at AVM. I'm streaming it as well on this YouTube. We wanna get as many people to watch this as we can. There are a lot of questions all lined up from what I understand for, for Dr. Brian King. If I get to ask a question, which I've, I may be able to ask a question, I think I have a pretty good question. I think I have a pretty good question and it's hard to not just want to be like, hey, Brian King, why are you such a jerk? You just, you can't do that. First of all, Brian King, how dare you? So, I'm sorry, I need to hydrate. I'm sorely out of practice of talking on a live stream and my throat is just gonna, it's just going to dry up and become that of the desert if I don't constantly hydrate myself. But yeah, that's happening tomorrow. Maybe I'll mention a little bit more of it as we get into like some news and advocacy area. But first things first, I don't know. Hang on. Let me check something real quick. Let me check something real quick. Okay, good. Okay. I didn't miss any super chats. That's good. There's no obligation for super chats, but I appreciate it. And uh, I'll get to them. I'll get to them when I get to them. Do you see how out of how seriously out of practice I am? One thing I'm not out of practice with, 
just drinking beer. So let's do that. Hard to mess that up. We have a Canadian beer tonight. This comes from uh, Canada. Uh, Megs222, <laughs> I always call her that. Megs222 sent this my direction. It's a Gill Netter Golden Ale Wheelhouse Brewing Company. Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. It's got, you know, some pretty good reviews out there on the internet. I like a good old golden ale. I'm excited to have a beer on the stream that isn't, uh, that isn't an IPA. You know, we just, too many IPAs, right? Too many IPAs. Oh, thank you, Richard. I, I appreciate it. Thank you that. Thank you guys for being my cheerleaders in the chat. I really appreciate that. Here's a mug I've never used before. I found this in the back of my cabinet, in the back of my glass cabinet. I always go for the tulip glasses. I always go for like a, you know, a pint glass. I don't even know what this glass is for that has the bulbousy on it. Are there any... Uh, Beer experts, is there a, is there a Poon Sauce McNasty in the chat? Maybe not any other beer experts that can actually tell me what the the little bulbousy part of this glass is for because, dude, literally, no idea. No idea. I just, I'm just a beer poser. I have a very surface level knowledge of beer, but I do not know what this glass is specifically for. Here's the thing, it's for beer, okay? You're, you're using it to the exact specifications. Glass, fill it with beer, drink it. Yeah, I mean, that looks like a golden ale. Not much of a head to drink through like a man, so we'll just have to deal with it. But uh, if I can reach my camera way back there, bonk. Cheers, you guys. Freaking happy Thursday. Let's go. Super nice. That's a super nice, crispy, sweet beer, dude. Super crispy, super refreshing, very slightly hoppy, very slightly, you know, very slightly astringent, but it's just so evenly balanced and so clean. I feel like I could drink a thousand of these Gill Netter Golden Ales. In fact, in fact, <laughs> Gill Netter, it took me a second. And I'm kind of realizing just right now when I hold up the can that gill netter is a fishing term. Gills, nets, you know, you put fish in the nets and then the gills go in the nets. Gill netter, fishing, boat, fish on the front. I get it. I get it now. It, it all makes sense. That's tasty. This is really tasty. Better grip. T vapes, is that true? It's a better grip for your for your pint. T vapes is telling me it's a better grip, so I could see that. I could see that. I could see that being a better grip, definitely, especially after maybe you've had a few adult beverages, a few uh, beers, perhaps you know those products that are only for adults. After maybe you've had a few and your grip's like loosening up a little bit and you're like, hey man, we should go, we should go heli skiing in Chile, right? We should do that. We should go heli skiing. I could see this. You'd go, oh, it's a good thing I got this bulb on here because otherwise this would have hit the ground. Head retention? Dale's saying it's for head retention. No, no. The ABV on this is only, uh, oh my God. I'm just kidding. 4.6. Little 4.6 percenter, easy peasy. Should be e smooth sailing tonight, smooth sailing. 20 ounce English pint glass. Na, 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 sick boy. Here's the thing. Is that true? Is this a proper 20 ounce English pint glass? So many, so many different reasons. I'm just gonna say, I think it looks cool. That's delicious. I don't really have anything on my desk to pair it with. Nope. Let's try oat drips. Oat drips, mung bean in the V-class mini thing. This could work. 
If this doesn't work, then that's it. You know, I don't have anything else that I think would pair with this. Blueberry custard? No. Grape? No. <laughs> Guava? Maybe. But I really only have that in a mouth to lung. What's in this? Oh, this is a layover. This is banana. This could do it. Not bad. Not bad. That's a nice little pairing right there. The banana is creamy and this is, you know, creamy, crispy. Yeah, it, it works. Like I'm not saying this is the best beer pairing I've ever had. I've already said that way too many times, you know, way too many times, but this is a damn good pairing. Damn good pairing. Cheese or jelly. Delightful. That's a damn hell ass delightful brew right there. Dang. All right. Well, got a little 4.8 percenter going. Nothing crazy. Not going to, not going to get ridiculous. Um, but that's uh, that's what I got. That's what we got for a beer tonight. If you're ever if you ever find yourself in the uh, provinces of the, the great country of Canada, check it out. Gilnetter Golden Ale. It's got some pretty okay reviews on the internet. I believe this to be Meg's favorite beer. Favorite beer. And I like tasting people's favorite things. Favorite liquid. Favorite beer. Favorite food. I, I like watching people's favorite movies with them. That's just something I really enjoy. Cheers. All right, good. I feel uh, some burps starting, starting to, starting to, starting to come to the surface. So I'm gonna take a quick hiatus from you. We're gonna do uh, some super chats. That's right. Uh, is my Stream Deck working? Did Stream Deck work? I don't think Stream Deck works. Nope. All right, let's see what's going on here in the super chat area. Oh, Connor Smith, that's very gracious of you. How do you fix cotton baking making flavor muted? How much cotton is too much cotton through the coil? Also, what's your go-to travel mod pod slash sub ohm? Man, that's a lot of questions in one super chat. Really well done. As far as muted flavor on cotton bacon, uh, that's a... I don't know. I've never... I've honestly never had muted flavor with cotton bacon. Cotton bacon always gives me rocking good crispy flavor like right out of the gate. I, I don't even ever have to deal with like a break-in period or anything with cotton bacon. Cotton baking making your flavor muted. That's a question above my pay grade. I've just, no, I've just not had that problem, Connor Smith. I apologize. How much cotton is too much cotton? Uh, the only way I can describe it is um, if you're pulling your cotton through your coil and it's pulling your coil, that's too much cotton. It's too much cotton. D don't let it pull your tail. Don't let it. It's a, it's a balancing act. You know, um, there's some companies that have pre three millimeter cotton, two and a half millimeter cotton, but with cotton bacon, it is very much like a, an eyeballing thing. So you kind of just have to eyeball the correct amount that only comes from repetition and, you know, doing it over and over and over and over and over again. I just make it a point that if I'm pulling it through and my coil starts kind of moving, I go, I stop, I go, whoop, too much, peel off a little bit, let's try this again. You want it to be snug, but not messing with your build, if that makes sense. And then lastly, what's your go-to travel pod mod sub ohm? I travel with usually a, uh, it's not even in here. It's all out in the living room. It's all out in the living room. It's all out in the living room. I will say something like this. I usually will travel with something like this. It was the Pastio Mini recently, but a little bit bigger of a battery, a little bit bigger of a capacity, and something that's like a little bit of an open mouth to lung, so I could do some open mouth to lung slash you know, direct restricted lung. This is the Crown M. Uh, I gave it a really good review. I still have been using it. I still really like it. The Vinci 3 I also took with me most recently as like a sub-ohm travel guy. It got a little bit uh, like crazy leaky on me, but it still vaped really well. PNP coil heads. Maybe something like that. Or maybe even that Geek Vape E100 kit. 
That could be something to look at as well. Okay. Thank you, Connor Smith. I appreciate you. Gunny, very gracious of you. Oh, he says, I got my tax refund, so I bought a lot of vape stuff. So here's a 10 spot. Gunny, bro, thank you. What vape stuff did you buy? What'd you buy? What'd you buy? Gunny, what'd you buy? GT Blaze 17, usually catch the stream replays at work. Finally catch the stream live while I'm on vacation. Also, the Nightmare 25 is life. <laughs> Rad, I'm glad you could be here, bro. I'm glad you could be here. Replay crew, I believe, still going pretty damn strong. I'm happy to see you here at the live stream. Enjoy your vacation, GT Blaze 17. As far as your Nightmare 25 comment, huh? listen, there's a lot of different vapes out there and everybody likes their own thing. And there's a lot of people that really like the Nightmare 25. Maybe I need to revisit the Nightmare 25 because it's just not my favorite RDA. I, I think I used it for one week before I went, I don't like this. And then I disassembled it. I, you know, I took my build out of it. I don't think I've revisited it since. So maybe it's worth a recheck, the Nightmare 25, huh? I'll do that for you, GT Blaze, I will. <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> gross. Yeah, I knew that was coming. I'm sorry. Mary Nixon, that's very gracious of you. Vaping on some DIY watermelon taffy vape for life. D DIY watermelon taffy sounds great. That sounds great. You want to post up the recipe anywhere so we can all have a crack at it? Okay, fishy. Hard to screw up drinking beer, but I'm sure we could certainly find it. We could. We could. In fact, I think we have <laughs> in the past. <laughs> I think we have found ways to screw up beer. I think I spoke too soon. <laughs> With all of the beer stains, like when Casey and I were swapping offices, she was inheriting like a beer stained office. It was up the walls. It was down. It was all over the floor. It was down, you know, behind my desk. There were stripes of beer from cutting them open and spilling them and then cutting them open again and spilling more. My soundboard still has beer all over it. That's how we screw up drinking beer. <laughs> That's how it happens. Chasing Clouds, flavor reviews. Uh, can you give me a short summary of what guava jelly tastes like? Is it guava lemonade? Is it guava strawberry lemonade? Super curious, boo-boo. Listen to me. I'll tell you. It tastes... I don't know. It tastes like guava. I don't get strawberry. I don't really get lemonade. I just get guava. The way that I taste liquids is I always, uh, after I taste something, I'll envision a physical object in my head that this tastes like. So every single time I taste this guava jelly, and I know it's not going to be much help to you, I picture a, just a thick slab of, of like homemade jelly that happens to be guava jelly. There's nothing else there. It's a sweet guava jelly. One of the reasons I like this liquid so much is I vape it and vape it and vape it. I never get sick of it. It's just a, it's just like a, a simple, straightforward flavor. And I don't mean simple in that it's not complex. It's just straightforward. It's a very, the name is guava jelly. It tastes like guava jelly. If you like guava, just don't even hesitate. Like, this is my liquid of the year. This is going to be a legacy liquid for me, Chasing Clouds. Like, I want to vape guava jelly for the rest of my life, if I can. If I can. If I can. I hope that helps out. Jedi, what are you saying? Yo, yo, buy more Girl Scout cookies. Dude, Jedi, where's the link? Send me a link. I'll put a link in the chat. We'll put a link in the chat. We'll get some Girl Scout cookie sales for you. Huh? Huh? Look, I'm down. We need to buy more. We're, we're, we have no Girl Scout cookies in our house at the moment and that this aggression will not stand. TJ, a very gracious of you. Nothing like a DOS boot. I don't think I've ever done a DOS boot. I don't know that I want to do a DOS boot. I like to enjoy things, man. I like to enjoy a beer. And it's like, I don't know, for some reason, we always take things to like the, the excessiveness of it, you know? It's like, Oh, I want to drink a beer. Well, why don't you drink like a 40 gallon beer? All right. Okay. Maybe I don't have to. Maybe I can just drink a beer. It's like, oh, I would like a cheeseburger, please. It's like, oh, do you want the monster burger? That's like the size of a pizza has 19 patties on it with a side of coleslaw. I'm like, no, I don't want that. I just want a normal cheeseburger. <laughs> and the, <laughs> 
It's just a thing. Just want to have this. I don't know if I'd be interested in a DOS boot. But I will say this, with enough peer pressure, I'll definitely do it. I'll definitely cave, 100%. Wired Talk with Big G, yo, yo, to you, bro. I appreciate you being here. He says, yo, yo, Grim and all the cool kids club. Uh, scrape Jackwood. I'm just kidding, Jake Scrapwood. Hope you got the battery out okay. Sorry about that. It, uh, I did. It's a tight fit. We might be using it tonight, Jake. We might be using it tonight. Jake Scrapwood, look, he didn't want, he didn't want this on the vlog, but I don't care. Jake Scrapwood... Uh, made me a Boro that is rad as hell. It glows in the dark. It's got Odorous's face on it. It's got Guar on it. Single 21700 Boro. Ammo's on the inside at the moment. And we might be utilizing that later. Might. Depending on how the very random liquid tasting voting shakes out, we might be using that in just a bit. But uh, it, it's just a homemade, you know, it's just a tight fit. I'm not expecting, you know, precision machining Jake Scrapwood, I know that this is a labor of love for you. I know you build these in your house. This is, I'll just say, I think the the finest mod you've ever sent me. I mean, the, the fit and finish is t t top notch, top quality. Like your skills are just getting better and better, Jake. Better and better. We might be setting it up tonight. Mallory Gates, uh, with some of my tax money, I got a Vaporesso. I got two Vaporesso Target 100 mods, the Drop V2, and two more S Serpent RDAs, and six new batteries, two 21700s, and four 18650s. That's it. Mallory Gates went vape shopping. So you're good now, Mallory, for like the foreseeable future? <laughs> At least on, ba you know, you got batteries, two Serpent RDAs? Two of them. I didn't realize you enjoyed the Serpent RDA that much. That's cool, man. That's cool. Congratulations on your haul. Uh, Lee, very gracious of you. The glass is called a no nick. See, now I feel like you're just messing with me, Lee. I really do feel like you're just messing with me now. The glass is called a no nick. A UK pint glass should be filled with John Smith Smooth or Boddington's. Yeah, cheers from Yorkshire, UK. Cheers back to you. There's a there's a half of a fist bump with a broken pinky on the end. Boddington's, I've definitely had. I'm a fan of Boddington's. I like Boddington's. Boddington's used to be my beach beer. There was a place, the Rayleigh's Grocery Store in Carson City used to sell Boddington's for a really good deal. So I'd go there and buy Boddington's before I went to the beach. I'll have to take your word for it that this is called a no-nick pint glass because that's too too convenient, right? Uh-oh. Did someone say, what's up, DJ Mattress? Uh, what I'm going to do right now is uh, I'm going to talk about a few things that I've been vaping. We're just not going to do it in the office. Let's go out to the living room. Well, I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you want to know what I've really been vaping, then we have to come out here to the living room. This is my spot on the couch. This is my table next to my spot on the couch. And this is where everything that sort of wanders its way out of my office ends up right here. Watching TV, grab for a vape. First things first, yeah, we just set this up on a build stream on Twitch. It's the Proxima with the Brunhilde mouth to lung RTA on top. I have some Sifu Stash Sokka's Mindbender and 12 milligram in this. Awesome. It, I mean, it's just been great. Great flavor, 1.2 millimeter airflow, heavy rubber band effect. The cables keep wicking, the cables keep wicking. It's just a banger and I like it by the couch. That coil on the inside has given me some very nice crackle, some uh, Twisted Timmy's top flights, I believe they are. The airflow still sounds a little bit like a tiny little 747 trying to take off. There's been a pod. It's the Vupu Vinci 3. I'm going to have a review for this out tomorrow, I believe. And despite what I said in that review, I, I still enjoy the way this vapes and I'm still using it at the, at the couch. Look. It's hard to go wrong with PNP coil heads. I have some six milligram smacks. Pony on acid found a couple bottles and six milligram immediately threw it in here. Awesome. This past TO mini pod from Smoant, 
I can't wait to review this. I'm in the middle of the review process right now, but it, I went into this with the lowest expectations known to man, and it has become like my daily carry pod. I take it with me everywhere. I love using it. I love vaping it. I love the flavor. I love the form factor of this dumb little thing. Anyway, review soon. Pastio Mini, of course. Guava Jelly. Deep Cuts. 12 milligram. Let's go. I just have this weird way of vaping with the Pastio Mini where I'll do a mouth to lung hit and then maybe a lung hit and then maybe another mouth to lung hit without ever releasing the button. It's a thoroughly enjoyable way to vape. Uh, disposables, okay. I don't like to promote disposables. I don't like to review disposables but I got some disposables recently from my friends. That's right, Omboy OC, MTurk, Local Vape. They released some disposables. They're 20 milligram, two zero milligram. Perfect. This is the perfect disposable for me if I was to exclusively use disposables, which I'm not ever going to do. God, honestly, the pink lemonade is kind of the bomb.com. Kind of free. I vaped 18 milligram e-liquid for probably two and a half solid years. Like that was my Nick level. That's just what I liked. I was satisfied by it. I vaped it, 18 milligram. The idea that this is a 20 milligram disposable, it's like it was made specifically for me. I got the Turk tobacco as well. It tastes like the weirdest like throwbacky mentholated tobacco flavor I can recall. Like I'm talking like 2009 mentholated tobacco flavor, which is to say it's not amazing, but I really like it. I really like this flavor, not just because it's a good tobacco mentholated flavor, but because it reminds me of those early days when you could only buy e-liquid directly from China and, you know, it would come in flavors like Dr. Pepper that tasted like, you know, burning potpourri. This is that very much a throwbacky menthol tobacco flavor. I feel like I just quit smoking. At least I hope that's supposed to be a tobacco mentholated flavor. Um, lastly, I always have cloud chasey stuff out by the couch. Uh, lately, it's been the Empire mod for obvious reasons. This is the gunmetal, but I can't show you. You know, don't tell Vapor's Cloud I showed you the gunmetal version of it. This is the TMF V2 RDA. Just did a review for this. Put a fat single coil in there, and this RDA has just sprung back to life for me. Loving it. I got a huge crackly single coil in there. The flavor is out of control. This is filled with uh, uh, Vape Zoo right out of Indonesia. It's the Lunar Sweet Mango. It's a, it's a great mango. I think it might be my favorite mango. It's heavily mentholated. It's heavily sweetened. Kills my coils, but it's a good mango. Like It's worth it. What am I going to do? Not vape it? That's crazy. I found that maybe I can get a little bit aggressive with this RDA and squonking. I don't like to go overboard, but I get a little bit aggressive with it and haven't really seen any issues with liquid coming out. I've, it's been clearly flooded, but not like leaking out. It's a good thing for a squonking RDA. And that's it. Like, that's really it. I have a Calmia pod that kind of just always travels with me everywhere I go it like nine times out of ten if I'm somewhere in my house or maybe out in the backyard or something and I go oh I don't have a vape I'll just hit my pocket and be like Calmia old reliable Calmia I know I definitely do have a bunch of desk warriors but I'm, I'm gonna let the other guy tell you about that hey okay well it's the other guy here and I'm gonna tell you about the desk warriors on my desk you already saw uh crown uh m I set up the uh I don't know I wanted to set up I wanted to talk about tube mechs tonight. We'll talk about that maybe uh, in the retro vaping that's coming up next, but I set up the Mandalorian Ashton Palmer, Palmer's powders, powder coated this Mandalorian mech mod, and it looks 
the so dopest. I love the crap out of it. RDA for vaping V2. Excision paradox on the inside. Just can't get enough of this liquid. Been basically vaping it nonstop. Battery's dying. Battery's dying. Oh, the battery's dying. What a jip. What a jip. That is messed up and a half. Dead battery. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so much better. That has been a severe desk warrior, as has... Uh, my other empire, there's like an empire upstairs. There's an empire in here. There's an empire by the living room. Uh, this is the nitrous RDA on top. Coil spills layover is on the inside. It's freaking good, man. It's freaking good. You already saw this. It's the V-Class. There's some, uh, you know, oat drips in here. That's been cranking. Uh, still have this going. It's the mix. It's the Typhoon GT4S. It's Lemon's Hope on the inside. Uh, it needs to be re-wicked, so I'm vaping it down. You know, I'm vaping all the liquid out of the tank so I can, so I can re-wick it. I don't necessarily want to dump out any of the Lemon's Hope because it's, uh, well, it's just damn good. Typhoon GT4S. And then, uh, you, you know, I don't know. There's a myriad of like random pods and stuff that I'm constantly grabbing. But that's it. That's like what I've been vaping. I tore most of my stuff down. The good stuff ends up in the living room. My desk warriors end up on my desk. That's it. That's what I have been vaping. But I did see some super chats coming in. So let's go check real quick. I want to see what you guys have been vaping. I got some Assignment Americas coming up. Coming in hot. Coming in hot. Let's see, where did I leave off? Dim lit. The Brunhilde mouth to lung is a banger. I use it all day at work. The 0.8 millimeter hole is best with my blueberry toaster strudel. Mm, that sounds delicious. The Brunhilde, this is my first experience with the Brunhilde. We built it on the build stream on Twitch on Tuesday. I've been loving it. I mean, literally ever since. Vape it, vape it, vape it, vape it. It could be that Soka's curse on the inside or Sokka's, Sokka's curse. No, it's not curse. It's Sokka something on the inside. Uh, really been enjoying it. I don't know about that eight millimeter airflow hole. That might be a little bit too, too pinhole for me, Mr. Dimlet. I at least have to go with like a one millimeter. One and a half, 1.2 is ideal for me. Appreciate you, Dimlet. Happy to see you around, buddy. Uh, Gray, Grayley's Hobbies. I said this earlier, but I figured it needed a super chat. Yo, brother, just when I say thanks for turning me on to vaping so long ago, uh, was a 15 year smoker, been vaping since I caught your videos. Amazing. Hell yeah. Th I mean, thank you. A, that's very gracious of you. And two, the, the pleasure is all mine. There's nothing like, uh, that's, that's my currency right there. That right there, that phrase of, I was a 15 year smoker. And then he quit as soon as he discovered vaping. Uh, he happened to watch my videos. That's it. That's my currency. That's my fuel right there. That's all the motivation I ever need is to hear someone say they were a 15 year long smoker. Quit. How'd you quit? Oh, vaping. Shit. Who knew it was that easy? <laughs> Every vapor did. I, thank you. Thank you very much. I very appreciate that. Uh, Radiohead fan 1998. Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Hell yeah, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. F yeah, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. How about <laughs> DJ Mattress, Tears of the Kingdom. Hell yeah, Tears of the Kingdom. I'm so excited for Tears of the Kingdom. Like beyond excited for Tears of the Kingdom. I've been playing Zelda on Twitch on Wednesdays in preparation for Tears of the Kingdom. I used to be a gamer. I don't want to tell the whole story. I used to be a gamer, and then because of Grim Green, I just stopped. I didn't have any time to do it, so I just stopped playing video games. The last system I bought was a Wii. I think before that, I had a PlayStation 2, a PlayStation, you know, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis. It goes all the way back to the Pong paddles that my parents had in the closet that my brother and I would play with. Tears of the Kingdom is the most hypey that I've felt for a video game, like, since, since like, the... I pre-ordered the PlayStation 2. I feel like that level of excitement. I feel like that level of excitement for Tears of the Kingdom. 
crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy, you guys. It is crazy. But what I would like to smoothly transition into right now, <laughs> I like the floating emoji heads. It's, it's making me chuckle, DJ Mattress. Uh, I have some Assignment Americas. What have you guys been vaping? That's too quiet. Louder now. That's right. It's Assignment America. This is actually technically Assignment Planet Globe. Worldwide contributions. I want to see your bangers. I want to see your vape gear. I want to see all the things that you love to love. That's what I want to see. We're starting off with Daniel. Look at Daniel here. Daniel's keeping it real. Some old stuff, some new stuff. He says, all right, last one. Uh, he says, two Vaporesso Target 80s uh, and a Gen 200 K-Fun Lite 2019. There's the Pulse AIO with the 520, the Luxotic Fire Button, an internal board cover from an old no-name box mod. Oh, wow. An Aspire Nautilus Mini. Aspire Nautilus Mini never gets old. I think that's the tank that my brother has vaped for like a decade now. <laughs> this is the Nautilus Mini. A Franken-Build Zephyrus Tabino K-Fun? An RDFA? I mean, that's bizarre. Zephyrus Tabino K-Fun? You have the Tobino like beauty ring, right? I'm trying to figure out what's going on in there. Humble Sorbet, Marketplace Lemon Biscotti. Daniel, psh, looks like a bunch of bangers. I appreciate you sharing that with me. Had another one here from, uh, he goes by the Vaping Duck over there in Michigan. This is Assignment Michigan. Hey, Nick, love watching your videos and vlogs. Here's the shout out. Here's... Out here shouting out the replay crew, by the way. Hashtag replay crew, vape and duck. I wanted to send in my collection and to say, keep doing what you're doing for the vape community, my friend. Been off the diet pickles for four years now. I love it. Four years, smoke free, jam monster, candy king everywhere, sub tanks, smock stuff, dead rabbit three. You'll love to see it. The big weed flag in the background. You just love to see it. Thank you, vape and duck. Appreciate you. Uh, had one more here from Justin. Justin sent this in. Justin R. Rocking a simple setup. My return to vaping as of 10-28-2022. I vaped for a few years and went back to cigarettes around the time of the first pods. So like 2017 maybe? Here's my only setup for the time being. Juice flavors are changing daily, but I'm off the stinkies for good this time. Hell yes. Hell yes. I believe in you, Justin. Vape that geek vape and voo like your life depends on it, you know? Try as many flavors as you possibly can. That's my only advice for anybody who's switching from combustible tobacco cigarettes to the far, far less harmful option of electronic nicotine vaping. Just try as many flavors as you can. You got to find your, your flavor, you know what I mean? If I get something that's like I'm wishy-washy on, I mean, I I did that. I did that back in the day. I bought terrible liquids from China stocking up. You know, I'm like, oh, I'm going to stock up on tobacco. I'm going to stock up on this Dr. Pepper flavor. Awful. They were awful. And initially it kept me from like really enjoying vaping. It wasn't until root beer. I finally got root beer flavor. That was the flavor that did it. Keep up the good work, Justin. Keep up the good work. So in the title of this vlog, it says, are mech mods dead? Well, one of my patrons, the great and mighty tribal Buddha, you know him, Blue Buddha Tinctures, he, he seemed very upset that the idea that I could even suggest, suggest that mech mods might be a thing of the past. He said, hell no, I'm gonna send you my collection of mech mods in picture form. So let's go through some of these. This is just one, one of a few of Tribal Buddha's mech mods. It's the snub nose on top, the old vape life. I don't know what mech that is. I don't know, don't know what mech that is. I don't know what mech some of these are. <laughs> I can tell that's a Velocity RDA on there and a Freak Show RDA, but wait, there's more. Coming in hot. I don't know what the white mech mod is. I don't know what the one next to it is, although that looks like a TVL. I'm uh, not sure what that one is. Not uh, Gods of Egypt. Okay, that's a uh, an Admiral broadside combo. I 
don't know what the fish bones RDA is. I don't know what that red RDA or red mech mod is in any capacity tribal Buddha. No idea. But wait, there's more. Uh, yeah, okay. These are, uh, I, I recognize these. I recognize these. I can't, why can't I think of the company off the top of my head? The middle one's Unicorn for sure. And then uh, what are these guys on the side? I can't remember the name of that company. <sighs> Why can't I remember the name of that company? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I can't remember the name of the company. Anyway. But wait, there's more. Last round. Not sure. That's a Nightmare 25 on top, though. I believe uh, there's a Recoil Rebel there. That's a Squy or a Rye. Something else next to that. Death Wish mods. Something else next to that. Something else with a Recoil. I don't know. And then the grip nade with the mic vapes on top. So clearly for tribal Buddha, no, mech mods are not a thing of the past. And I don't really think that mech mods are a thing of the past, but immortal mods, immortal mods. Thank you, drip theory. Holy crap, drip theory. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, drip theory, immortal mods. Boosh 9000, that's what it was. I'd like to see re-wicking day for tribal Buddha. You know, how many, how many re-wickings is that? So many, <laughs> so many re-wickings. Well, on that note, uh, if anybody else would like to send in some Assignment Americas, I want to see your bangers. You can send them on over to me, nick at grimgreen.com. Just mark your subject, Assignment Planet Globe. Assignment Planet Globe. I'll see the attachments. They will get used and filed accordingly, but I do uh, definitely want to see your bangers. So send them on over. And on that note, talking about mecular mods, should we do some retro vaping? Should we do some retro vaping? Uh, oh no. I don't have the retro vaping bumper. What a bummer. I knew there was something I forgot to put in here. Oh, that's okay. In lieu of a retro vaping bumper, which we are going to jump into retro vaping literally right now, it's going to be a mech mod. In lieu of a retro vaping bumper, um, we got Phil. Let's hydrate with Phil real quick in between segments. I feel like I need some uh, hydration. Shock bra. Thank you, Phil. The sexy one. Country corpse. Whatever whatever you're going by these days. Now that that was the retro vaping bumper, so now we're officially in retro vaping area. And on the subject of mech mods and weird ass RDAs. Let's see if I got this in the shot right now. Does anybody recognize this? Oh yes. What do we have here? That looks like a mech mod to me. This is Old school, the most old school thing of old school mechs that has ever been an old school mech. I haven't even tested it out. I didn't even dry fire it or anything today. I don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to try it. This is uh, uh, an Avid. I believe this is the Able. I believe this is an aluminum Able. Back in the day... You know, mech mods were the first like high end hemo thing in vaping. They were the first really expensive product that ever really existed. The price just skyrocketed suddenly. It was like mech mods came out and people realized you could charge three, four, five hundred dollars for a mech tube and people would pay it. I don't know if anybody remembers things like uh, the Caravella or the, uh, you know, any, almost anything out of the Philippines, Masterpiece Custom Vapes or the Nemesis, but they were all high-end, high-end, very expensive mech mods despite being, you know, it's, it's aluminum. Look at this. It's just an aluminum tube. It's very, very thin aluminum 
But I guarantee you that this mech mod was well over $200. Well over $200. I love the feel of it. Boom, boom, Cali Claw like that. The Avid Life stuff or Amerivape stuff, the Manhattan. They always had, uh, you know, their big claim to fame was strong magnets in the bottom. This is wasn't a spring. It was two very strong magnets repelling each other. And you got that fire button, that fire happening right there. So this isn't just the only retro vape. We are going to try to do some hot building action because we got a Hugs Vape Piper RDA in the mail. Uh, maybe what was that two weeks ago? What was that two weeks ago in the vlog? And this came from uh, Chris, aka Raven187. Uh, he said, here's the worst piece of vape gear I've ever tried. I don't want to bias your use, but wow. <laughs> Had potential and was different, but somehow someone said, yep, that's the thing. Go to production. It's laughable. P.S. I'm Replay Crew, so a heads up. Uh, some, let's give Chris Raven a heads up <laughs> about the uh, about the RDA. Has anybody, is there a show of hands in the chat? Anybody use this Piper RDA? I took a little bit of a look at it and it looks just the worst. Actually, I didn't really take that long of a look at it. I only pulled out the pin and put in a regular pin so we can put it on this mech. And that is gonna be sick, assuming it will work and fire on here. I need to grab my building device real quick though. Hang on, hang on. It's the gua box, you know? You, you, you gotta use the gua box to do your building on. Now, let's take a look at this nightmare of a deck. Nightmare of a deck. I know, yeah, I, I saw the edge of that QR code. Thank you, Addy Tooney, thank you. I hate having to watch stuff like that, like a hawk, otherwise YouTube will just murder your channel. Ha! What's going on there? Look at that miss. That is ridiculous. So the airflow goes up from the bottom and then into the middle and then outward at your coils, like on both sides. Do you see those like venti things? Vertical coils, vertical coils, dude. Vertical coils. All right, here's the thing. I have uh, a selection of Duchess coils. We're gonna try to find something to go in here. Dual coils, and they have to be vertical. I wonder how they have to be, are they gonna have to be counterclockwise? Let's see. Yeah, oh, this would be good on a mech. Triple 27 gauge core, Aliens, triple 28 core aliens. Let's try these. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what can be done. Let's see what can be done. I don't have any uh, chill building music, so you'll just have to imagine. You just have to imagine, uh, you know, DJ Mattress's newest drop. Just the bass, the beat dropping on you. Let's get, let's, let's, I'm not going to spend too much time down here because I have to pull it away to actually look at this deck and see what's going on. Yeah. So we just need to add a wrap. Not necessarily add a wrap, but make it so that the leads are going off in two different directions, correct? I think that's the correct way that we're going to do this. Yep. Yeah, wow, this is a really garbage design. What a really garbage design. All right, there's flat head screws on top. Top. Let me get this one coil in here and I'll show you how it fits. Uh, it, it's dumb for a lot of reasons. A, vertical coils, no, 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 no. I'll pass every time on vertical coils. I don't know what it is. They vape weird, I don't like it. It upsets me. I can tell the difference. If you put an RD, two RDAs in front of me and one of them has vertical coils, I'll be able to tell. 
I'll be able to tell. Uh, the one bummer part about this is the screw is going to smash your lead flat. This is an alien and the screw comes down from the top, which is gonna be the side of the alien. So the alien's like a little bit flatter of a coil and it's gonna get squished. It's gonna get totally squished from the top. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, all, I mean, all things considered, this is a pretty easy install. Okay. Something like that, except now we have to actually wick it. Ah, <sighs> yeah, this is a bad RDA already. Already bad, I know I don't like it. Like that, see how it got kind of smashed, twisted the lead around? I guess it didn't smash it so much as it just twisted it. But that's one lead in there. Wicking it's going to be a pain in the butt. Just a, a pain in the fish head. Complete pain in the fish head. Let me get this other coil in here. I got to think about how I'm going to wick this. I should have wicked it before I installed the coil, but then I couldn't glow it. So, you know, what are you going to do? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, this is a piece of shit. Oh, this is a piece of shit. This is an epic piece of shit. What a terrible fucking piece of shit. I'm sorry for so many obscenities. Here's what I'll say. I don't know how to say it without obscenities. It's a piece of shit. What a terrible idea. So you can put one coil in that's wrapped clockwise, but your other coil has to be wrapped backwards. Because of the way that the deck is, the higher and the lower, I can't just put two of the same Duchess coils in here. I would need to find a counterclockwise Duchess coil to put in here. Because otherwise, let's try it and I'll show you what I mean. It's 10 kinds of jacked though. No, this is not going to work. Eh, let's try it. You might be able to get enough space. Gah. Whoa, Chris, you were not kidding. This is kind of, I don't know if I said it enough already, kind of a big giant piece of shit. What a terrible idea for an RDA. One of the leads is going to have to wrap clockwise, and the other one you're going to have to wrap counterclockwise. Yep, I'm not going to be able to get this in here. I'm not going to be able to get this in here, which means, fuck me. We're going to run this in uh, team single coil today, I guess. Because the coils need to match. Like, they need to be mirror images of each other so the resistance isn't all fucked up. So I need two of the same coil but one of them needs to be wrapped clockwise and one of them needs to be wrapped counterclockwise because this deck, again, is just a piece of shit. All right, team single coil. Let's try it <laughs> because I don't have time to build my own fused Claptons and wrap them clockwise and counterclockwise. Should I could do one side with a round wire. Plus, wicking vertical coils is the worst. I know. I'm going to end up pulling. Let's pull this wire out of here. Let's do round wire. Let's do round wire. I feel terrible for wasting a Duchess, a whole Duchess coil. But I guess I should have thought about the fact that one of these needs to be clockwise. can't find my round wire. Uh, yeah, all right. Nope. Oh, here it is, here it is, okay, okay. 
Team single coil. Nope, we're gonna do 24 gauge round wire. I'm determined. We're gonna spend too much time on this retro vape as per usual. We're gonna end up running long. I'm gonna, as soon as I get into the Discord hangs, Jake Scrapwood's gonna go to bed. It's okay, I can cut some other things. I can cut some other things in order to remain on schedule. Dumb, dumb. Let's throw it in the garbage. I want to vape it. I want to vape it. I feel like I owe it to Chris to vape this. And we're going to do dual 24 gauge round wire build. That's going to be terrible. On a Mac, it's going to be bad. <laughs> it's just going to be bad. There's no way around it. Okay. Let's go. Okay, so this one is going to be clockwise. Right? Yep. Clockwise. Here we go. We're going to do a dual. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, probably eight wrap, right? We'll call it eight and a half because I'm going to bring it around another another time so that the leads are all going in the correct direction. This is going to be the worst vape we've ever had. Here's what I'll say, though. The worst vape I've ever had is better than the best cigarette I've ever had. Sorry, my trash can's like on the other side of the room now. I didn't think ahead. Okay, so this one can go in. Woohoo! You better be worth it. Uh, this side, okay. Oh, shit. Okay. Okay, Chris. Okay. I see what you did here. You gave me a, a terrible task to accomplish. I guess if you're dealing with round wire, it doesn't matter. Oh, except the screw spits the wire out. Hey, great. You know, this is the this is the prime example of a time in vaping that was just lawlessness. Like people were releasing anything and everything, even if it was terrible, and selling probably thousands of them before word got around that these were terrible. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and all you had to do back in the day to appear innovative is to just do something completely different no matter how well it worked. Even if it was a terrible thing, even if it was this RDA, I guarantee you when this RDA came out, people were saying, oh, so innovative. Look at that. Dual vertical coils. Airflow comes from the middle. Wow. Innovation. When in reality, it's not innovation. It's just a weird, dumb, dorky design that doesn't make much sense. And this one's going to go counterclockwise. Look at that innovation. Oh, three airflow holes. Innovation. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and a halfer right there. Great. I miss round wire a little bit. I think I say that every single time. Kind of miss round wire a little bit. It's just so easy to build, you know? And honestly, this RDA, when did this RDA come out? Does anybody know? Can anybody Google this for me? Someone be my man in the desk. Oh. 
I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right, and I'm going to get my I'm going to get my wire like actually centered in here. Or I'm just going to half-ass it and say that that's good enough because this doesn't need to be another three-hour-long vlog. Or maybe it does. Who knows? All right. Unreal. That was crazy. Oh, no, that's not screwed down all the way. Wow. I mean, I'm impressed with how complicated this RDA is. This is one of those things that's like completely unnecessary. Completely unnecessary. I can't imagine that this vapes so well that this type of deck, this dual vertical coil deck would be justified. They go, oh, the flavor, you know, the vape is so good that this deck is definitely worth it. Everybody remember the Velocity when the Velocity came out and they're like, hey, building's easy. <laughs> That's the goal. We should make things easier for people, not complicated for the sake of complicatedness. Okay, here. I'm done ranting. Let's take a look at these beautiful coils. Rate those on a scale of 1 to 10. Eight and a half wraps. One's clockwise. One's counterclockwise so that they can both be... You know, heated up, fired. This is going to vape bad. 2018 is the earliest date you see on Google. Nick! Hey! Nick Devine, bro! Legend in the house. Legendary builder in the house. If you guys don't know Nick, fucking legendary builder in the house. I feel, I feel completely... Like completely embarrassed about my weird round wire coils in here now. I'm like, oh, Nick Devine's here. Shit. I better bust out those Fralians. Just kidding. Uh, let's resample. No, this is going to be bad. This is going to be the worst mech vape of all mech vapes in the history of mech vapes. It's reading a 0.35 at the moment. Which on a single 18650 mech mod probably isn't going to knock your dick in the dirt. Hashtag just saying. Let's get those glowing. Oh, round wire. I love you so much. You glow so evenly, so perfectly. Get some, throw some Omboy custard on the inside. I've been vaping a lot of that. I know what it's supposed to taste like. Now, as far as wicking this goes, why don't I just go chew on some glass? I hate wicking vertical coils. There's rarely enough room underneath. There's rarely enough room underneath. Ha-ha! I guess. Did people do the dumb thing where you put the cotton across the top? I guess. I'm, I'm assuming people did that. You know, you can wick it down one side, fold it over the top, and wick the cotton down the other side. That's got to be the hip way people did it. I'm going to do it too. I can just tell that that's the way that people were doing this. Let's try it. Because it would look good on Instagram, you see. And that's what matters. It doesn't matter how it vapes or if it's functional. It just has to look good on Instagram. Got to get those likes. Oh, this is going to make me so angry. Yeah.
Yes. Old Grim still got some skills left in him. Not much, but some, you know? That is some Instagram worthy wicking. We're done. We did it. Easy. Easy. Like nobody would even know. Easy retro vape. I'm going to put my tools away. Looks good, too. I mean, if by good you mean terrible, that's the cool way to wick it, right? Yeah, it is. That's the cool way to wick it. It's the good, yeah, it's the old comb over. We call that the comb over wick. The old comb over wick. Is there a comb over emoji on Twitter, on Twitch? Because that's funny. Can you search comb over? No, but we can just do a bunch of Dwayne's. That's fine. He'd, he'd approve of my round wire build. He's like, oh, yeah, bro. Let's drip some uh, liquid on here. Can tell. You can just belay your liquid. So it's going to run down. <laughs> what a terrible deck design. Looks fluffy. Does it look too fluffy, John? We might have to actually try this on the Guar. We might not be able to do this on the uh, Avid Life thing there. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. We'll get it wicked up. We'll get it juiced up. We'll throw it on that mech. I'll tell you one thing. I sure do love some own boys blueberry custard. Now I need an 18650. Strong enough to power this. Well, uh, I'm using a rewrap ohm tech ohm life. Okay, that's pretty dope. Like, okay, this is kind of a dope part of this. We got the uh, we got the mech here. Kapow! This battery, watch this battery just glide in here. You see it just glide? That is like a glidey, soft, smooth little battery drop. That's impressive. That just feels good. That's worth the price of admission right there. That battery drop though. All right, it's firing. We got the hug vape. <laughs> No, it's not the Hug Vape. Oh, it's the Hugs Vape Piper RDA. RDA! Piper RDA! Sitting on top of an, a very old school uh, AV mech mod. Pfft, cheers, Boosh 9000. Let's see how this goes. I mean, listen, it's vaping, you know? It tastes like Ohm Boy. Sorry, it doesn't taste like Ohm Boy. Few people know what Ohm Boy tastes like. Tastes like Ohm Boy OC's blueberry custard. I'll tell you that much. The airflow, not great. Turbulent, uh, turbulent, sharp, turbulent, turbulent airflow. Okay, flavor. Honestly, okay flavor. Um, the, the best part of this whole retro vape is the mod. This is comfy beyond words. Like even just going to the 21700 Mandalorian, which for a 21700 feels pretty slender. This feels like a toothpick compared. This feels like a comical, like, like the tiniest little mech mod 
It's so narrow, so slender through there. That button on the bottom has always felt nice. You know, there's something to it. Those magnets, that big contact. It's firing these 0.33 round wire coils well, like good. Like I would say good. Airflow is just the suck though. Just the suck. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate you, Steve. Super sharp, super turbulent airflow. Not really enjoyable. The flavor is okay. The flavor is okay, but I'm going to agree with Chris and say that this is kind of the worst piece of crap I've ever vaped. I could think of 100 RDAs off the top of my head I would vape before I vaped this. And all of them are horizontal coils without the comb over cotton. There's something about vertical coils. What is it about vertical coils that just licks butts? Listen, Bob, Bob, as long as you say that, as long as you're, as long as you're not saying you liked the goon one point, (laughs) sorry, as long as you're not saying you liked the goon LP, then we'll be fine. I like the 1.5 over the OG, but the goon LP was butts 25 Butts 25. That's all it is. Uh, Okay, Piper. Hey, Chris, thank you for the experience of getting to build and use the glorious Piper RDA. Um, I'm going to immediately probably tear this down right after the stream. Maybe I'll use it for a little bit just for, uh, you know, ironic reasons, I guess. But not a good RDA. Not easy to build. Not fun to wick. Vapes, okay. This vape is not, the juice is not worth the squeeze. This vape is not worth that build deck at all. I would probably give maybe even less, Len, maybe even less than five and a half banana stickers. The RDA might get like four banana stickers. The mech mod, look, it still holds up. In fact, let's throw an RDA for vaping V2 on here just to see, but I am guarantee it's still going to hit. It's still going to hit great. Ah! It's fine. I vape. I know about 510 threading. I've been doing this for a little bit. Yeah. Like, it rocks. It's comfy. It hits nice and hard. This is an Tech Ohm Life battery in here. Hitting great. Hitting great, but man, that Piper RDA, what a, (laughs) what a, (laughs) I think I've said what I need to say about the Piper RDA. We'll just leave it alone. Is Hug Vape even a company that exists anymore? Uh, Yes, I do still have it. It just doesn't function anymore. Uh, I broke the button. I broke the button and believe it or not, there's no more customer support for, uh, the trog screwdriver. So I just uh, straight up have not been able to do it, use it, do anything with it. I've been trying to think about getting it out for a retro vape. I want to track down like a DSE 901. Really, the there's a one retro vape experience that I'm after, and that is I had just started vaping. I was maybe a month or two months into it, and I was waiting for my trog screwdriver. And I was dreaming about this trog screwdriver before it arrived. Like for some reason I had this dream that when I vaped the screwdriver, it was like cloud chasing, you know, even though it was just a little 901 atomizer, I had a dream that I was exhaling these huge clouds. I used to dream about vaping a lot. And then I got my trog screwdriver and I got the honey flu cured tobacco that they sold with it. And I got a fresh 901 atomizer and I got my truck screwdriver and I got my batteries. And I remember setting it up at my desk and turning around and putting my feet up on my bed and watching the office while I vaped my truck screwdriver. And it was like, it, I don't know, everything clicked like so tremendously when I was using the screwdriver, I thought this is great. This is it. This is the future of vaping, man. Big batteries, big tubes, no more pen batteries, no more stick batteries, screwdriver, baby screwdriver. 
and I loved it. So if I could get the screwdriver going with some of that old honey flu cured tobacco, new 901 atomizer, shit. Maybe even an HH357. That would be kick-ass level 9,000. Uh, all right, well, hey, well, I'm gonna go check in on the Super Chats before we jump into some quick news. What's going on in Super Chat land? What's going on in uh, here? What's going on over here? Okay. Uh, where did I leave off? Spooky boy? Spooky boy? Oh no, uh, Grail's Hobbies. Grail's Hobby said, just to clarify how long ago, it's been 10 years since I started watching you. Started with an old Kanger and an old Snow Wolf mod. Dude, 10 years. You've been around the long haul. You've been around the whole time. That's badass. Thank you. Like, A, thank you for sticking around that long and like caring. It's great. And two, congratulations. You know, dude, 10 years. It, it's crazy that what happens when you switch. You know, your first few days are rough. Maybe your first week is rough. Maybe your first month is rough. But once it clicks and once you get it, once like there's a flavor that you like or a battery, an atomizer you especially like, it, it just starts getting way easier and way easier. It's like weeks turn into months, turn into years. And before you know it, you're like, oh, I quit smoking 10 years ago. I've been smoke free for a decade. I love it. I live for it. Uh, Again, thank you very much. Uh, Spooky boy, you didn't say anything. You didn't have to. You have a fist bump right there. Will Colburn, that's very gracious of you. The super chat of the beast. All I've been rocking is mechs for almost nine years. So simple and sweet. Plus, who needs a roll of quarters when you got a mech? Yeah. You know, I used to say, Will, I used to say that mechs and RDAs were just the manual stick shift of vaping. Like, it, it's so straightforward. It's just a battery discharging into coils and you drip on those coils and it's mechanical and there's nothing that can fail and there's no boards that can fry and there's no, you know, the, the, theoretically a mech mod could just last you the rest of your life. You know, you could buy a mech mod, maybe not a mech mod, but with proper care, dude, mech mods. Will, I had a feeling you were in that mech mod life. I knew you were in that mech mod life. Uh, DD, damn it. Oh, DD, darn it. Sorry. Sorry. I didn't mean to get so vulgar with it. Uh, dual used for two years before finding that special flavor. Yes. Yes. Dual used for two years before finding that special flavor. Smoke free for four and a half months now after 38 years. I want to give you a hug. 38 years of smoking cigarettes. Now smoke free for four and a half months just from finding the right flavor. Oh, this is everything. That's everything. Like this is why we are against flavor bands. It's not just because I enjoy grape. It's because DD, damn it, dual used for two years before they got that, that, that flavor, that one flavor that's their flavor. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. In fact, share, share on CASA. Tell your testimonial to CASA. I, I love it. Thank you for being here. Uh, Vaping Butcher fell down the billet box rabbit hole and I got the Ladybug billet box and a stubby ALO along with the Ether RBA. Okay. The stubby slaps, I mean, the Ether RBA slaps. It's not great in mouth to lung. It's okay. But it slaps in restricted lung. I love it, Butcher. I love it. I want that stubby 21700. If I have a stubby 21700, I'm setting it up today. I don't even care. Sewer rug, uh, kazoo, and king cake. That's the good stuff. Sad that the DJ is gone forever now. I know. We'll just cherish the time that we had together. Yo yo tendencies. Hashtag boosh that pod. Yeah, boosh it. Boosh it. Boosh your pod. D I have a feeling. I have a feeling we haven't seen the last of uh, DJ Mattress. You know? Sorry. Sorry. DJ Mattress. <laughs> I feel like we have not seen the last of DJ Mattress. Uh, Nick and Divine83, uh, thanks for the shout out. You are the GOAT. Uh, I love seeing 400 people watching. I Look, I love that too. Is that how many people are watching? Okay, I suddenly just got really nervous. Is there really 400 people watching? 
Okay, do you feel my heart rate like suddenly start racing? Uh, thank you, Nick Devine. And Devine, look, everybody, and Devine in the chat, follow him on Instagram, follow him on YouTube. Uh, the dude is a legendary builder. He live stream builds. Him and his buddy are doing a uh, alien speed building competition that I, I really want to see this. <laughs> They're doing an alien speed building competition, and I think that's sick. So, Nick Divine, you're you're the true G. You know, you're the you're the legend in my book, bro. Legend, legend. I won't hear anything else of it. Jig Scrapwood, that's very gracious of you. You need a 22 millimeter hobo from 2016 and a plume veil 2014 in your retro rotation. Both still hold up after all these years? That's a pretty big statement there, Jake Scrapwood. The plume veil? I think I have a plume veil clone. I'm going to try to dig that out for a retro vape. I think I've had a plume veil clone. I think we've done it before, actually. Let's get it back out. I never had a hobo. Always wanted one, never got a hobo. The hobo came with those, uh, didn't come with, but everybody used them on those super squatty little, like, uh, 18350 mech mods. It was like a little mech and a little hobo on top. It was almost like the original pod system. Just the tiniest vape you could find. Nathan, damn it, man. That's very gracious of you. You didn't say anything. You didn't have to, Nathan. I appreciate it. Have a fist bump. Uh, Pedro, appreciate you. Yo, yo, Nick, just got my first RTA. Please said sh shed some light on how to up my cloud chasing been running a dual 18650. Will changing my mod do anything? No, it will not. If you're running a dual 18650 regulated device, your mo changing your mod isn't going to do anything. Cloud chasing comes down to the topper. Comes down to the topper. The topper and airflow. <laughs> the topper and airflow. If you want to just chase crazy clouds, yeah. It's the topper and the airflow. Uh, RD, I don't know. That's I don't want to make that general of a statement, but traditionally RDAs are a little bit more cloud chasey oriented than RTAs. But in 2023, there's so many good RTAs out there that you can definitely have a big cloud chasey experience if you want to. But really, airflow, more airflow, that's where your clouds are going to come from. Big long rips, you know. You can do the uh, what the old uh, cloud compers used to do. I like thinking about cloud comps from back in the day. I used to go to the vape capital, vape capital, cloud comps, and I watched uh, a 19-year-old dude win ten thousand dollars for blowing the biggest cloud. I think that is like the old vape industry in a nutshell. This dude won ten thousand dollars at a cloud comp for just blowing the biggest cloud that's all he did just blew a big ass cloud and all the judges went yep his was bigger ten thousand dollars congratulations there you go <laughs> cloud chasing man that that changed a lot of things rob that's very gracious of you uh i looked it up i've been subs i subscribed on march 31st 2011 that is crazy that's uh Let's see, March 31st, 2011, that was a year in. That was a year in already. That was two, was that two years in? No, 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 that wasn't two years in. Yeah, that was two years in. Whoa, that's that's a trip. That's a trip. You caught me at my infancy, just barely into this YouTube thing. To be fair, Rob, I still feel like that same guy from March 31st, 2011. Like the only thing that has changed is my camera isn't a piece of shit anymore. And I figured out how to have good lighting. Like that's it. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just that dude. <laughs> I'm just that, just that dude. It's okay if you miss the cloud comp era, Fishy. You, you, you weren't missing out on much. I used to hate judging cloud comps so much, but I always said yes. And then I always told the contestants that I was a crooked judge. And if they paid me money, I'd make sure that they won. It never, nobody ever paid me off. Nobody ever paid me off, but I put it out there. I was like, I care so little about cloud comps that you could give me 10 bucks and I'll make sure that you win this cloud comp. I'll vote for you every time, even if you get up there and just blow a piddly little thing. 
Rocking the Nemesis clone, Nada. That's cool. I have, still have my original Nemesis, but it is 10 kinds of busted. I broke the kick ring. I bent the threading. It was, it was not a good thing. It was not a good thing. Would you guys real quickly like to get into some news, some 15 minutes of uh, news and advocacy? I think so. Okay. Uh, let's get Matt Sinister out here and let's do 15 minutes of news and advocacy. I'm going to whip through this, but the first thing I'm going to mention is the AVA stream. Yeah, AVA stream's happening uh, again, or I'm mentioning it again. I'm going to put it down here. AVA, happening tomorrow, happening on this YouTube. Please come. Brian King is engaging with the vape industry, like with vapors, with the stakeholders of this technology, of this industry. And I think that's a huge deal. We've never had an opportunity like this. The vape in, we've never had an opportunity like this to be on a live stream with AVM and Brian King, someone from FDA talking about vaping and vape regulations. If I get to ask a question, I have a question all planned out. That's gonna be very polite and the such as. But I think this is going to be a huge deal, so everybody should show up. Next, in the description of this video, there's a ton of call to actions. Calls to actions all over the place. Literally every state you can think of, call to action. This is something that just is going to happen and just is going to keep happening. The only way to fight against the bad vape legislation, right, right here, CASA, free, easy. Sign up, they send you emails, you do the calls to actions. And this is something that is a continuing journey. This is a continuing battle. This isn't, oh, did the call to action. Oh, they stopped the flavor ban. Nice. If they stop a flavor ban, they're going to try again next year. We're coming up on a new legislative session. So all of the states that had failed flavor bans are they're going to try again. They're, they're, they're all going to try again this year, which means there's going to be a shit ton more CASA calls to actions. It's going to be things like flavor bans and taxes and, you know, ridiculous nonsense on harm reduction products while leaving cigarettes just alone. Just go smoke. Just would you go fucking smoke already? Would you just go do it? So please, please, please do it. Please, please do it. Now, I really wanted to talk about the drama that happened on Twitter because this was the greatest thing that I ever saw. <laughs> this was the greatest thing that I ever saw. So let me back up for a second. Quitvic, Quitvic, this account, Quitvic is a government account. It's part of the Victoria Australia's government. If you go to Quitvic, it's like, here's our website. It's a wet, it's, it's a government website. It's funded by Victoria Health, the Victoria state government. This is state-sponsored anti-vaping propaganda. You can't touch Cochrane. You just can't, can't touch them. You can try, but you can't. Cochrane is the gold standard of, of meta-analysis. Electronic cigarettes for smoking cessation, the systematic review. These, this, I don't even know how to explain this any more than I already have. Gold standard for scientific meta-analysis. Gold standard. And because you can't pick that apart, they can't go to the conclusions of the Cochrane report and say, oh, they're wrong. Cochrane's wrong for this, this, and this. No, the only way that Quitvic is going to trash Cochrane is by saying that they're funded by British American Tobacco, which is a straight up fabrication, complete lie, just a, a, a complete 100% lie, so much so that they started getting called out by, you know, literally every vape advocate on Twitter, literally every vape advocate on Twitter was being mostly respectful, mostly polite, calling them out on their lies and saying, Cochrane is not funded by British American Tobacco. You're just making that up. That's just a lie. And then Cochrane got involved and said, hey, we don't receive tobacco industry funding. We're funded by Cancer Research UK and the NIHR UK. And the article that you shared doesn't even say that. So in an effort to smear vaping and harm reduction, Quitvic says that, oh, 
can't trust the Cochrane Review because they were funded by British American Tobacco. Here's a link, except this link doesn't say that. <laughs> they just they just made it up. They're just like, oh, uh, uh, they get funding from British American Tobacco. You know, that's why you can't trust Cochrane. Oh, really? You can't trust the gold standard of scientific meta-analysis because of British American Tobacco, which they receive zero funding from? Literally zero funding from. I got blocked for pointing it out. Uh, every, I think uh, every single vape advocate got blocked uh, for pointing that out. And Greg Conley, I think, had the best take on it. <laughs> we at QuitVic apologize for our false claim about Cochrane Tobacco Addiction Group. It was brought on by our complete inability to read a newspaper column written at a ninth grade reading level. You can still trust us to analyze scientific papers and to block those who point out our errors. Yeah, they tweeted, we've deleted our tweet. See this? We've deleted our tweet in error and unreservedly apologize for the false claim. They know that they made a false claim. They admitted that they made a false claim and then they blocked everybody who pointed out the false claim. The Australian government blocked people who were pointing out that they were lying. And even when they admit it, we had misunderstood a media article about the impartiality of research into vaping. You misunderstood it? You don't get to do that. <laughs> You're like a scientific health organization. You don't get to go, whoops, I really read that wrong. I thought it said that Cochrane was funded by British American Tobacco. It actually doesn't say that anywhere. I don't know how I was so mistaken. No, that's bullshit. You, you, you read it reading what you wanted to read and then you just made shit up in your head. And then to apologize, we tweeted an error that Cochrane Reviews of Vaping was funded by British American Tobacco. We understand the review is impartial from a respected journal. We also know that people who vape are three times more likely to go on to smoke. <laughs> so they couldn't even apologize without additionally throwing vaping and vapors right under the bus. The funniest thing is that that article, this study that they published that they said vape three times more likely to go on to smoke, that study doesn't say that either. <laughs> that study doesn't say that either. Quitvic, the Australian government, tweeted out, complete wrong misinformation, disinformation, just fabricated lies. When they got called out, they apologized and then blocked everybody that called them out. So now, you know, it's whatever. I can't tweet at them and say that that's not actually even what that study says either. Quit Vic Australia. Oh my God. So, quit. and it's like the Australian government. That's crazy. Yeah, you can see blocked, just straight up blocked. I pointed out a mistake. I pointed out a mistake and got blocked. I pointed out a lie that they told, got blocked. They're like, thank you everybody for pointing out this complete fabrication. And yes, I guess we misinterpreted what this article said, but we're still gonna block you for pointing it out. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy that the government did that. The Australian government did it. We are living in, in, in weird, weird times right now. W real weird times right now, you guys. Real, real weird times. So there you go. That's the drama that happened on Twitter. And I had to talk about it because I was just like blown away by what I was seeing. I was like, wait, what? They're just making shit up and then blocking people who are pointing it out that they're making shit up so that they can continue just to make shit up? Bananas bananas i think that's bananas all right listen up we got six minutes left i gotta mention this we're good with university of michigan again university of michigan is actually trying to get some good information about vaping out into the stratosphere we talked about university of michigan in the past we're going to talk about them right now university of michigan study e-cigarettes should be recommended more for smoking cessation. Yeah, you know who said that? 
Kenneth Warner, Dean Emeritus, the Avidus Donabinian Distinguished University Professor Emeritus at the University of Michigan School of Public Health and one of the study authors. He said, far too many adults who want to quit smoking are unable to do so. E-cigarettes constitute the first new tool to help them in decades, yet relatively few smokers and indeed healthcare professionals appreciate their potential value. Kenneth Warner has been one of the big uh, cheerleaders of vaping, one of the few big cheerleaders of vaping that we have in the United States. The problem is nobody's listening to him. Nobody's listening to him. This is in the Detroit News. No big mainstream media uh, picked this up in, in any capacity. Uh, under the study, this is the study that they did. It says, under the study, researchers looked at vaping in countries that promote it as a smoking cessation measure and countries that do not. Uh, they said they evaluated the country's regulatory activities, examined evidence that vaping increases smoking cessation, looked at health consequences of e-cigarettes, and researched the implications for clinical care. They said there is high level support and promotion of e-cigarettes as a first line smoking cessation treatment option in the United Kingdom and New Zealand, but in the United States and Canada, agencies acknowledge the benefits of e-cigs, but deem the evidence to recommend the devices for smoking cessation as insufficient. This is called double think, okay? This is what happens in tobacco control not just in tobacco control but it's double think it's where you may it's where you where you maintain two completely conflicting schools of thought the fda saying that we acknowledge that these are markedly less harmful and we're even going to authorize some of them for sale and say that these are appropriate for the protection of public health but the evidence for the other e-cigs that are exactly the same as the e-cigs we just approved the evidence for the other e-cigs well that's insufficient completely insufficient only the e-cigs that fda approves are the ones that will be potentially beneficial not the ones that that they haven't approved is, is that making sense to everybody the same technology from a different company uh, isn't good enough but that same technology from Altria is. Fascinating. That's fascinating. We believe that governments and medical professional groups and individual healthcare professionals in countries such as the US, Canada, and Australia should give greater consideration to the potential of e-cigarettes for increasing smoking cessation, Warner said. E-cigarettes are not a magic bullet that will end the devastation wrought by cigarette smoking, but they can contribute to that lofty public health goal. Abso-fucking-lutely Kenneth freaking Warner. I'll put a link to this down in the description. Share it. Share this around with everybody that you possibly can. I don't know how you read the words Kenneth Warner, Dean Emeritus, the Avidius Donabinian Distinguished University Professor Emeritus at the University of Michigan School of Public Health. Like that's that's credentials beyond anybody. That guy could tell Mike Bloomberg to sit down. He doesn't understand the science. Hard to argue with Kenneth Warner in the University of Michigan. So I'm going to put this in the description of this video because I want everybody to read it. Read it a few times and uh, share it. Just share the crap out of it. I guess that's it. That's what I got. Victoria Health, uh, terrible. Vic quit. Awful. Keeping smokers smoking. It's infuriating beyond words. And that's just the world we live in right now. We live in a post-truth world. There's no truth anymore. Everybody can just create their own realities. You can just sit in your house and be on the internet and never leave and go, this is my reality. I'm just going to live here in this reality and I'm never going to leave my bubble. And I'm never, you know, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's crazy. I mean, it's literally crazy. The idea that FDA is saying that this is appropriate for the protection of health. This e-cigarette, this vapor product is appropriate for the protection of health, public health. But this e-cigarette that's the same, but happens to be flavored, that is not appropriate for the protection of public health. That's called doublethink. And I don't know how to get around it. I don't know how to I don't know how to communicate to someone to make them realize that they're holding like a double think position because they can't see it. They never see it. 
They don't see anything wrong with that. Anyway, I'm getting too philosophical here. Let's have some own boy blueberry custard. Matt Sinister, my brother, rest in peace. Thank you for the rad poster. Nope, see, I'm going to get all weepy. I miss you, buddy. See you later. Until next week, Matt Sinister, and you can complain about my news and advocacy. Uh, cream pie to you, face meat. Cream pie to you. Great. What else do I have on the list here? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. What time is it? It's only 6.10. Double think. Double speak is essentially the same, but double think is the word I'm trying to think of. Double think is what the FDA does. That's double think. Saying, and it, you, you, once you're aware of the idea of double think, you see it literally everywhere. You see it with, I've seen it recently on Twitter where staunch anti-vaping advocates are reluctantly because of the, you know, mountain of science that we have, they're reluctantly saying things like, well, maybe switching from smoking to vaping will improve your health, but it's going to ruin a kid's life. You know, they're going to start vaping and then they're going to smoke cigarettes and then they're going to do drugs. And the same product can literally save an adult's life but destroy a child's life. Double think, double think. One thing is good for the appro appropriate for the protection of public health. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm uh, I'm a little all over the place right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna back out of the double think, double speak. But it's a real thing, and once you do it, once you notice it, you can't not notice it. Let's we're gonna pop the Dixon. We're gonna get into some. Uh, Mother truck and vape mail. I don't have the vape mail bumper. All right. Well, tonight, instead of a vape mail bumper, let's enjoy the dulcet tones of Omboy OC. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. Any time of year. Dun, 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 dun. I believe I can fly. Great. Well, welcome to Vape Mail. Uh, my finger is starting to bother me a little bit, so I'm going to put on this brace so it doesn't, you know, I don't accidentally bang it on things. It's still a little bit painful. I went to my first physical therapy appointment, and I got a bunch of uh, exercises and things to do so I can get my full range of motion back and... It's just a stupid, dumb, long process, and it just bothers me. And I wish I had never, uh, I wish I had never punched a wall. But look, lesson learned. Let's get into some mother truck and vape mail. Oh, I put on my brace before I took off my Dixon. You know what? We're leaving it on. I'm leaving the Dixon on. I don't even care if I'm sweating my balls off. I'm going to use my gimpy hand on the knife, too, and you can't stop me. <laughs> okay. Hey, we got some new smock. Solace. The Solace G-Box with a free lanyard. Here, I can show you this one because there's no uh, QR codes on the front. Smock Solace, Smock Solace G box and the Smock Solace G. These look clear and transparent. So I'm gonna open one, wait, yellow. Is there a better color? Well, there's a bunch of stuff, a bunch of different products from Smock in here. The Pro Pod kit. Solace. All right. Let's open the pink Solace. I just want to see what it looks like. I'm not going to like set it up, set it up. But, you know, smock stuff has been a little bit like good lately. I don't know. I'm, I still use this, the, the uh, you know, the Novo 2X. I still use that all the time. 
Okay. Well, I don't love that. Nope, don't love that. Don't even really want to show that on camera. Oh my God, e-cigs, they're marketed to children. Look at this. Can you see this? It's a skull that's skateboarding. I think to people that don't understand the world, that could be appealing to children, but really that looks like tattoo flash art to me. And I think because it's a, a cartoonish looking character, people have obviously never seen new school tattoos, but that's what it looks like. It's clear on the front. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I guess I'll pick one up. What is that? Uh, is that uh, <laughs> is that what's his face from Opeth? Was that the singer of Opeth? <laughs> Was that the singer of Opeth? Michael Ackerfeld? That's his name. Oh, QR codes. Okay. All right. Right on, Smock. All right. Don't know where this is coming from, but let's get it open. I believe I can soar. It's been a minute since we've had Yak Song. Uh, listen, Barry. Really? Is that true? I've been. Here's the thing, Barry. Uh, the owner of the company said it's pronounced smoke, not smock. I have been calling it smoke since 2012, 2011 was when they first came out and they were making really bad mech mod clones. I called them smoke. I called them smoke. I called them smoke for years until we got to like, I don't know, it was like 2019 or something like that. And everyone kept saying, oh, actually it's smock. It's not smoke. I said, oh, I've been calling them smoke for so long. I'll start calling them smock, I guess. So I started calling them smock and now I can't stop calling them smock. <laughs> I can't stop calling him smock. Oh, wait. Oh, I don't know where this is from. Hang on here. <gasps> Hello, Monarchy Poland. Hello, P22 Squonking Atomizer. Not bad. Get a load of this. Get a load. Get a load of this. You see it? Oh yeah, it's a little uh, monarchy Poland squonk RDA. Pretty tight airflow. Nope, nope. I just had one covered up. Well, you know, I got to tell you, it's a good thing that squonking is making such a big comeback. That's great. Look at that little RDA on top of this guar box. That's goofy. Yep, single coil. Co configuration kind of exactly like I, I thought it would be. You see this? Look at that deck. There's the deck right there. Squonking up through the bottom. Single coil. Airflow comes in through the side. Reminds me of something. I mean, you know. There's a lot of banger, little flavor banger RDAs like this. The Hadley and the such as. Comes with a beauty ring. Sick. What color could I put that on? Orange? What color? Gunmetal? That gunmetal? Sick. Dude, I'm stoked. Ultim cap? Thank you, Monarchy Poland. Is this a... Boro, oh, this is a Boro tank from Monarchy Poland. Clear Boro tank, sick. Sick, man, love Monarchy Poland. I'm excited for this. This is something we can build on uh, maybe on Tuesday. The P22, I'm not hip to, I didn't know this was a thing, the P22. Dean T dual setup. Yeah, the Haku, like the Haku Vena, Haku Zeta. No, the Haku Zeta is a Boro bridge. And I have here's the thing. I'm not gonna open this. Those are I got Christmas gifts from my mom. And I haven't opened them yet. And I feel bad. 
<gasps> I didn't get a garbage bag. I did not get a vanilla scented garbage bag. Whistle for days, according to Bogan, if used as a single coil. Better for two and a half millimeter dual coils. Are you talking about that uh, P22 right there? Are you talking about that P22 right there? We'll see. <gasps> this is a good vape mail day, you guys. This is a good vape mail day. This is a really good vape mail day. What do we got here? What's that say? What? Yes, I agree with those emotes. Throw me the horns, baby. A little something from uh, Atmazoo. <laughs> and nope. Hey, whoa. The air tank, A-E-R, it looks, uh, what's the best way to show you this? Does this work better? It's called the air, A-E-R, tank. I, I'm assuming it's like a, I mean, I thought this was like a tripod 25 or something like that when I first pulled it out, but it's at Mizzou. So there's no threads. It's all going to be locking with O-rings. What does this even do? Does this drip down from the top? Nope, that's just the juice fill. Okay. Fill, juice fill. Okay, so let's line those up. What the hell is happening here? All right. There's a four millimeter airflow in the bottom. Okay, here's the thing. This is an Atmazoo RTA and it's gonna be a little bit fiddly. So I'm not even gonna futz with it right now. Not even gonna futz with it. Save it, save it for a build stream, Nick. Whoops. Oh. There's an extension kit. Oh, look at that. There's an extra chimney, extra glass. So I'm assuming you can make that a higher capacity, a little bit taller of a tank. Dude, it's a pretty boss looking tank. I mean, Atmazoo, like, has Atmazoo had a clunker? Has Atmazoo ever had a clunker? I've personally never had a clunker from Atmazoo. Tripod, tripod two, those both rip. Vape shell, the vape snail, those both rip. I haven't had a clunker. I never had a clunker. Um, we got some, yeah, hang on. Ohm Tech hit me up. Ohm Tech hit me up. Uh, I don't know if they just noticed that I bought a bunch of Ohm Tech batteries recently, but I spent like a good 200 bucks, 250 bucks on batteries, and they were mostly Ohm Tech batteries. Yeah, clunker free zone, right, Ern? I've never seen Atmazoo with a clunker. Does anybody know of an Atmazoo clunker? Did they release like a really crappy RTA at some point? And so, uh,. Uh, they hit me up and said, do you want to review batteries? And I said, no, I don't. And they said, well, can we send you some batteries? I said, well, yeah, of course. Of course you can send me some batteries. So we got some advanced chem 18650s. I don't know if you can see that writing on there. Advanced chemistry INR 18650s. Some more advanced chemistry INR 18650s. I don't know of the advanced chem. I need to talk to Battery Mooch or something about that. Zion Vlogs uh, says the air is better than all of the tripods and it's 24 millimeters. Better than all the tripods? Have you had the original tripod? It's like, it's crazy good. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about that air. 
We'll do it on a build stream. Has anybody in the chat used the air already other than Bogan, other than Sam? All right, so we got some batteries. Uh, I got a battery charger. Pro two amp charger. Charges batteries like an electric vehicle. Displays the real time, real world battery state, sock state, just like today's EVs. Integrated with imperative safety features, including low wattage, preconditioning, overcharge prevention. All right, charger. Uh, chapstick. Where was this when I was in Louisiana? Is this really just chapstick? Yeah, shit. It's just chapstick that looks like batteries. Hmm. Hmm. Tastes good too. Ohm Tech Ohm Life chapstick. Is that what you want? <laughs> Is that what we're all after? Let's see, there's some more batteries in here I need to look at. Yeah, more advanced chemistry 21700s. Advanced chemistry 21700s. I know nothing about these, but we're gonna find out what they are. Okay, some more different advanced chemistry 18650s. I don't know what the difference between the red and the purple is. I do not know. Batteries that took AP science. <laughs> is that what that is? Advanced chemistry, AP science. Yeah. You know who probably took AP science? Kenneth Warner. Dean Donovanian, distinguished emeritus professor. What's the difference between these? Is it really just different colors? 18650. Huh. It doesn't really say what the difference is or if there is a difference. Sick. All right. Well, well we got some new batteries to, to fit around with. We got some new 18650s, which means 18650 Max. 18650 Max. this oh oh my god this is okay so yes never mind this is not a thing this was this was a package that's supposed to go to germany but it's been returned to me twice now twice i'm just gonna bring this with me when i go to hall of vape that's all i'm gonna do i'm just gonna bring that with me when i go to hall of vape and deliver it in person to the person it needs to go to. Dude, at Mizzou, at Mizzou mail, Monarchy Poland mail. Gosh. Rad. Packing peanuts for some reason. <gasps> okay, so there's some candies. There's a, a dairy milk. There's a fudgy. I like these fudgies. This is obviously from the United Kingdom. And that means that there is a Black Widow Stubby 21 on the inside. Let's go. I got a gold Stubby tank for the inside. A mouth to lung kit for the Stubby tank a secondary tertiary stubby tank and some some damn hell ass good british candy and blue packing peanuts that you can eat you can eat them you just chew them up okay i'm gonna put the candy over here okay real quick do we have time nope we don't have time it's 6 30 this vlog is supposed to be over by now i'm just kidding it's not supposed to do anything but be awesome Hmm. Yep. Good safety battery information. Yep. Do not put it. Yep. This is good. Good stuff. Check your labels. Do a little inspection every time. Oh, okay. Here, wait. Maybe this is going to tell us the difference. 
There is the work, the alone, the life, the depot, the mega, the Sherlock, the run, the run XL, and the grown two. Okay, they're all just slightly different specs of batteries. There's a few 18650s, but some of them are rated for 25 amps, 15 amps, 22 amps, 16 amps, 22 amps, 30 amps. Oh, but that's a 2700. Tells you the resistance limitations, the discharge rate, the continuous discharge rate. That is a mess of information. Okay. Thanks, Ohm Life. Thanks, Ohm Life, Ohm Tech. I can't wait to get into those batteries. Let's real quickly look at this Stubby 21. Hey, oh, feels thick. Feels thick. Feels like a thick boy. What's rattling around in there? Ah. Thick. It's thick. I didn't watch the, uh, I didn't watch like the premiere video because I just thought, oh, I think that's going to be a stubby with a 21700. Turns out it is a stubby with a 21700. I kind of, What's shaking? Something's rattling still. Oh, there it is. Uh, it's the stubby, you know, and it's in a 21700, so it's bigger. It's just thicker. It honestly doesn't feel that much thicker. It just looks thicker. I mean, I guess you kind of have to assume when they're, you know, you know, I knew, you know, you know, they're going to do a 21700 version. Like even when the first stubby came out, it's like, I didn't know for sure that they're going to do 21700, but you kind of just have to assume, you know, you kind of just have to assume. So to those that never got the stubby, it's a 21700 now. And I got a mouth to lung kit for that tank. And I'd, I'm excited to run this in uh, some hot mouth to lung action. Otherwise, dude, it looks like a stubby, top to bottom. Same engravings on the inside, really great hand feel, same button placement, except now 21,700. It's cool. The murdered out black, I think looks sick. I, maybe that's a little bit too uh, predictable for a dude who vapes to like the matte black one, but I don't care because it looks dope. It's matte black. Matte black stubby 21700. Okay, let me put this away. I don't want to, you know, lose it or anything. Oh, that means I have to put these back in here. Hey, that's okay. I'm excited to get this going. Stubby, stubby, 21, 700. Did anybody sleep on the stubby? And now like, you're all pumped for the 21, 700. All right, that's it. That's all she wrote, folks. What a good hell ass good vape mail. Damn, bro. Uh, Monarchy Poland, hi. N new RTA from Mo Monarchy Poland or RDA, the P22 from Monarchy Poland, new Atmazoo RTA, Stubby 21700, a mess of new smock pods. This, is, this was a good vape mail. This was a good vape mail. Here's the thing, Dimlet Knight, I agree. A Black Widow, like a Black Widow symbol in, in shiny, you know, like gloss, matte, if I could do like matte black, shiny black, like glossy and matte on that stubby, like if I could get the doors to be glossy black, but the rest of the body to be matte black, oh, that would be sick. That is sick. That would be sick. That would be hella sick. All right, uh, look, I think that's it for uh, the very random liquid tasting. Um, I mean, the, the, the vape mail. Do we have time to do Getting to Know Grim Green? Yeah, why not? We got time to do some Getting to Know Grim Green, a very random liquid tasting. But before we get there, my friends, the 
Nice. Super chat. Okay, okay. Let's see what's going on over here. Where did we leave off? That's right. Nathan, that's right. Pedro, that's right. Rob, that's right. Uh, Connor, uh, what got you using cotton bacon rather than Muji? Um, I started using cotton bacon regularly um, in... Shit, 2017, I think. I think 2017 is when I got into cotton bacon because they sent me... Cotton bacon had been around for a while, but their newer cotton is much better than their old cotton used to be. And I didn't like their old cotton very much. When I tried their new cotton, I thought, wow, this is actually really good cotton. So I started using it like kind of exclusively. I put it in all things that I could rebuild. For a long time, I was using the Kogan dough cotton. The Kogan dough organic, uh, you know, you remember the pads, Connor Smith? The pads, Kogan dough organic cotton pads. I loved those. I lived and died for those because I loved being able to get the pad, put it next to my coil, and then cut a strip that's the perfect size for that coil, like perfect size for that coil. The tearing, it's it's a pro, you know, it's a struggle to do it consistently and it really just takes repetition. But once I started using cotton bacon exclusively, I got really fast at pulling off the correct size and using it. And I noticed I don't get really any like break in period. There's no like cotton flavor or anything like that. And uh, I just, I don't know. I just like cotton bacon. I just like it. I think it's a good bacon. And honestly, I, I like the company. I think they're a, uh, I think they're a company with integrity. And that, that goes a long way with me. Beer's done. Um, Chasing Clouds and Flavor Review says, wow, that looks thick. That's what she said. Uh, you spelled thick incorrectly, Chasing Clouds. That's T-H-I-C-C, I believe, is the way that the that the cool kids are doing it these days. Not my cool kids. Not, I mean, not the cool kids, but like the royal cool kids, like the world of cool kids. I think cool people spell it T-H-I-C-C, -C, you know, T-H-I-C-C. -C. That's the thick. Hashtag thick life. Hashtag thick life. I guess the one bummer part about these emojis is the octopus doesn't super work when they're all floaty around like that. That kind of bums me out. I want to see the octopus. Eh, what are you going to do? Um, let's start wrapping this up. What did I have left to do? Oh, yeah, that's right. We were going to do a uh, getting to know Graham Green and a very random liquid tasting and call this good. So... Let's do that. Do I have the getting to know Grim Green bumper? Yes. Okay, finally. I was prepared with one thing. I feel like I'm too far. I'm gonna move this camera a little bit like this. How's that? Is that better? Who knows? I'm new here. Let's uh, very randomly taste some liquid. Wrong. Ignore that bumper. Disregard that bumper. It's uh, it's getting to know Grim Green. <laughs> too loud. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that was too loud. <laughs> I'm sorry that's too loud. So um, we're going to add some songs to the Getting to Know Grim Green Spotify playlist over there on Spotify. I'm going to take this off now that we're not doing mail and I'm not in any danger of banging it on any uh, hard objects or anything like that. <sighs> this is one of the exercises they gave me. Is she's like, hold your pinky by the knuckle and just try to wiggle the top of it. And then hold this knuckle and just try to do the middle of it. And keep going back and forth and doing that. It's difficult and it's painful. But the more you do it, you notice big, di you notice little differences. You're like, oh, I can move it more today than I could a few days ago. Anyway, uh, good night, Boatful. Boat, bot, boat, Boatful. Appreciate you. Um, oh, that's right. We're doing Getting to Know Grim Green. So, you guys, you know what's happening? 
You know what's happening? Um, there, I bought tickets. Is Patrick Conquest here? I bought some mother trucking tickets to uh, Furnace Fest uh, in Birmingham, Alabama uh, this year, September 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, 2023. Just per peruse some of these bands. I don't know if anybody's in into any of these bands, but man... This lineup is something I couldn't sleep on. I uh, The Furnace Fest that happened in 2021 and 2022, I just, I was obsessed that I couldn't be there. I, I watched live streams. I watched uh, everybody's like videos. It's like, oh, the Strong Arm reunion happened. And of course I watched that video. And I watched like loads of performances from all of the Furnace Fest. And all I kept thinking was, God, I have to go to Furnace Fest. God, I have to go to Furnace Fest. Don't you want to go to Furnace Fest? And so I saw the Furnace Fest flyer for this year. And the Friday night headliner is Mother Trucking MXPX. I'll catch you on the replay. I'll catch you on the replay, Billy. The headliner on Friday night is MXPX. Yeah, look at that. Between the Buried and Me, Bane, bro, Bane. Thursday? Are you kidding me? Thursday? It's just, I mean, MXPX, Hatebreed, sure. I can leave Hatebreed. I don't care about Hatebreed. I've seen them a few times. They're fine. MXPX, Holy Wars, Hopes Fall, 90 Pound Wuss is playing, dude. Norma Jean, Open Hand, Piebald, Project 86, Sparta, Walls of Jericho. Like Friday is going to be insane. Saturday, Saturday is like my least favorite day. Like, I don't know. I don't, I'm not into super a lot of these bands, but the Bronx, of course, X Toll. Yes. Gorilla Biscuits, of course. Living Sacrifice, I want to see. Uh, Terror, I want to see. Training for Utopia, I want to see. Zayo, I want to say. Youth of the Today, I want to see. Sunday, Bane. Bane. Please tell me somebody listens to Bane. Bane. Bane, Pennywise, Haste of the Day, Between the Buried and Me, I mean, good lord. Armor for Sleep, Blessed by a Broken Heart, Goaty Hook, Further Seems Forever, The Insiders, the only, I think that's the only ska band playing Furnace Fest, The Insiders, Judge, May, Strife, I mean, good god. Goaty Hook, so... Not only am I definitely, absolutely, without a doubt, going to Furnace Fest this year. I already got my tickets. I could prove it if you want me to, but I'm not going to do that. I'm definitely going to Furnace Fest this year. The Bronx. Sewer Rug. The Bronx. Like the Bronx. So, in honor of this last weekend in Louisiana, listening to a lot of this band, and in honor of this band headlining the first night of Furnace Fest, I, I had no choice. I, I had no choice but to talk about one of my favorite bands, probably of all time, easily in my top five favorite bands of all time. It's MXPX. What? MXPX. They're just so near and dear to my heart. And I, and I I feel like I grew up with MXPX. I've told the MXPX story a billion times on the stream, but I feel like I grew up with MXPX. Like their first album, Poking At You, came out when I was in high school and the singer, Mike Herrera, was like a year ahead of me, also in high school. Like they went on their first tour. They were still in high school. They released their first album. They're still in high school. So I've been listening to MXPX and I feel like I grew up with Mike Herrera. We're both basically the same age and he's still in MXPX playing Furnace Fest and I'm going to Furnace Fest, I mean not to see MXPX just, but that's a big that's like a big draw. When I saw Friday night MXPX, I was like, "Okay. Well, this looks like this year's the year I'm going to Mother Trucking Furnace Fest." So, I think we should all go. <laughs> Everybody in the chat, if you're here right now, Let's go to Furnace Fest. Do you want to go to Furnace Fest? It's in it's in Alabama. It's in September. We could hang out. We could watch bands. We could get, you know, get in the pit a little bit, throw some elbows around in the pit. <laughs> if you're into that, I'm not. I'm too old for the pit these days. This is the MXPX album I wanted to talk about today. 
This came out in 1996. And this, this is MXPX Life in general. This was, it's hard to explain how every MXPX record gets better, but Polkanacha came out and I thought, this is amazing. I love every second of this. Polkanacha comes out and then less than, it wasn't even a year later, they released Teenage Politics. It's like Teenage Politics is amazing you know just completely blew me away so much like so much better production so much better songwriting like mike's vocals sound better they got tom on guitar now yuri sounds amazing on the drums like teenage politics ruled and then i graduated high school in 1995 and then this album came out in 1996 and this was like the the big mxpx record this was the mxpx record that like they put money into this, like Tooth and Nail saw how big MXPX was gonna be and was like, well, let's put some money in that next record. The production is beautiful. It's amazing. Everything sounds great. Mike sounds great. They all sound great. Some of my favorite MXPX songs, period, are on this Life in General album. This was the album that you could kind of start seeing that MXPX was gonna be huge, like just gigantic. Everything on this album, top to bottom, the production is beautiful, the songs are great, and I love every second of it. I can't I can't stress how much I really like MXPX. How do you not like that art on the back? And that album artwork just hit with me so bad. I was like, yeah, I was in high school. I was the guy with the chain wallet getting thrown in the garbage can. <laughs> that that's that's me over here. This is Grim Green right there. Yes. I've been in garbage cans, M many in high school. One of them was upside down. One of them was upside down. Tony, my bully, he uh, he was considerate sometimes. He'd put me in ass first, uh, but there was one time in the freshman hall, I just went in head first. So this album cover really hit with me, really hit with me, and I just, you know, I love MXPX and I'm gonna go see MXPX at Furnace Fest and uh, Life in General is just a really s stellar album. If I could put every song from this on my playlist, I 100% would. Soft Carrots, all right. Well, thank you for making me feel like I'm 100 years old. I graduated high school in 1995. High school, I was 18 in 1995. Uh, well, I mean, depending on when the month was, I was only 18 in 1995. That's crazy. That is crazy. Um, Life in general, this is from the box set, so it's not an original pressing. But come on. Purple and green vinyl. Life in general, like, it matches the same purple. It's the same purple. It's the same green. It's so badass. It's so badass. It's such a good album. It's such a good album. And yeah, this was the album where I was like, yeah, MXPX is gonna be huge. Like you could you could start to hear it. Their songs started sounding a little bit more put together, a little bit more polished, a little bit more slick and a little bit more radio friendly. And you know, you're like, it's gonna happen. Like Chick Magnet was the big song off of this that ended up getting a bunch of radio play that ended up getting them signed to A&M Records where they released like Slowly Going The Way and then everything else after that was on A&M. This was a big deal. This was a big album for MXPX. This was a big album for me. And I just, I love this band into the ground. And uh, you know, Mike Herrera, he's, he's a little bit of a hero of mine. I like that he's just stuck to his punk rock guns and uh, you know, he just decided when he was 15 years old, he's like, I'm gonna be the singer of a punk band. And then he just did it. And that's awesome. <laughs> that's just fucking cool to me. So we're gonna put two songs from this album on the Getting to Know Grim Green Spotify playlist. I don't know if Delia is here, but the first song on the playlist is definitely gonna be moved to Bremerton. We heard it 16 times, I think, 16, 17 times this last weekend. Move to Bremerton. Move to Bre. Oh my God, it's so good. Move to Bremerton, and uh, the very last song. I was trying to decide between Crystalina, which is a great song, Southbound. Southbound. We're going with Move to Bremerton and Southbound. Both songs are about traveling up and down the West Coast, which is kind of weird. Move to Bremerton. 
MXPX was from Bremerton, Washington, and the song is like, hey, he met a girl and he wants her to move to Bremerton. He's like, come to Bremerton, we'll hang out and it'll be great, and I love you and you should move here. Move to Bremerton. And then Southbound is about driving from Bremerton to Southern California to record their albums in LA, and they're talking about being Southbound on I-5 through the, through, you know, through the West Coast. Just good songs. Get into MXPX, you guys. Just get into them. It's like melodic pop punk that just you can't not feel good. You know, you can't not feel good. You want to get a lip ring? I know. I want to get a lip ring now, too. I want to dye my hair purple. Just purple lip ring. You know, I'll just be like, something on I-5, <laughs> windows down and music on the stereo. Chris Alina, yeah, she's so cool. <laughs> That's a good song. Maybe we should put all three. Should we put all three on the Green Green Spotify playlist? No, we'll just do those two. We'll just do those two use guys. But uh, yeah, MXPX, Furnace Fest, bro. Love it. Love them. Is the remastered of the album better than the original? Um, I don't know about better, but certainly just as good. Certainly just as good. Yeah, I guess it is better. I guess, I mean, sonically, it sounds better. It sounds tighter. It's really good. Not that it was like sloppy to begin with, but man. Listen, Drip Theory, I love me some pop punk. Like, I just do. I just do. Like, I'll, sure, I'll listen to like, you know, street cred punk. I'll, I'll listen to uh, Dead Kennedys, you know, <laughs> Misfits. I'll listen to some to some street cred punk. But pop punk? Stop it. Stop it. That's my favorite. Give me some pop punk for days. Give me MXPX. Give me Slick Shoes. Give me no FX. Give me pop punk. Give me Blink-182. Give it to me. Give me catchy, catchy choruses. <laughs> Give me catchy, catchy choruses. That's all I want in life. Just a damn catchy chorus. In fact, MXPX, like, yeah, MXPX almost got me out of being in a metal band. Like I, I was in a metal band at the time and I was so, <coughs> pardon me. I was so obsessed with MXPX and Slick Shoes and Value Pack and Hangnail and all these pop punk bands from the tooth and nail scene that I, all I wanted to do was quit my band and start a punk, punk band. That's all I wanted to do. I was like, I'm starting a punk band. That's it. Enough is enough. I love punk music. I'm going to start a punk band. Never did. Never started it. The closest I got was a band named Code Adam. We were a little pop punky, just very slightly, very slightly. Yeah, Melancholin, Melancholin for days. Are you kidding me? Goldfinger, Goldfinger for days. I'll take it, Drip Theory. I'll take it. In fact, Drip Theory, give me, give me a punk band I should listen to. Give me like your favorite punk band. What should I listen to? I'm all up for some music recommendations, Drip Theory. Keeping in mind, I listen to a pretty wide variety of music. I want to know. Give me that. Give me that recommendation, Drip Theory. All right, it's uh, it's gone on a little bit too long. Let's. Uh, here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we are going to do. The first thing we're gonna do is just you know. How many can I do? Oops, that was too many. Uh, it looks like Yak is fighting with a cat, I guess. Okay, um, I'm gonna start a poll. After I end this poll, nobody knows what cheese in your jelly is. That's fine, 53% of you said WTF. 31% of you confidently said, yes, I cheese my jelly. And 16% uh, of you don't cheese your jelly. That's a damn shame. You should always be cheesing your jelly, nonstop. Uh, when I mention when cheesing your jelly does sound like a euphemism, maybe it's not. It's a charcuterie term. Uh, when you have a charcuterie board and you have cheeses and meats and crackers, you have honey, you have jellies in there too. So what you like to do is you take a cracker, you put cheese on it, jelly it, cheese your jelly, eat it. Or you can, I mean, it's called cheese in your jelly, but really the jelly goes on the cheese and you eat it. It's an, it's amazing. It's, it's a delightful. It's a delicacy. It's a delicacy even. Okay. 
Cheese that jelly, baby. Cheese it. Someday. Okay. We're doing a, a very random liquid tasting again. And uh, there's going to be some repeats. Okay, so I'm going to put the poll in the chat. I need you guys to vote. Please vote. Please vote. I'm going to turn on some, some loud voting music. <laughs> is that too loud? Is that too loud? Cicero, is that too loud? Anti-flag? Uh, my favorite brand of jelly is... Uh, uh, it comes from... Um, there's a dude uh, kind of like in the Rocky Mountains area. Uh, he makes some homemade... Uh, what is it? God. Oh, uh, uh, DJ Mattress! I, li I really like those. Uh, Boosh Boochberry is my favorite. Uh, Under Lock and Blueberry is a good one. Boochberry is a good one. Uh, uh, Bloody Cherry, real good one, real good one. Okay, let's get to voting, you guys. Vote, please vote, please vote. You'd be, you'd be my favorite person in the world if you just voted. And in the meantime, let's look at uh, just some floating Jay Hayes heads because that's who that looks like to me. Even though it's not Jay Hayes, it just looks like Jay Hayes to me. Let's see, where's this at? Lime straws. Okay, so let me at least show you what's on the uh, on the agenda. Lime straws. This has been up for a while. Gnarly lime straws. Rebel bogan. Posh my melon. That's up there as well. And then lastly, does everybody remember Lackley? Lackley Bananola from Indonesia. That guy's that, that guy's face. That guy's crazy face. That's up there as well. Okay, so. Just vote. That's all you need to do. See those hear those blast beats? I can't. I can't blast beats. I'm not a drummer. I don't even know why I pretended to do that. Uh I I you I've I've uh I've 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 never bought stuff from Jay Hayes. I've reviewed his products before. But uh if he didn't send them to me, I don't know that I would uh, purchase, purchase. Although his new squonker, dude, it looks sick. <laughs> like that is a sick looking squonker. I've just been stuck on that paradox. That paradox is just so damn good. I'm glad we had that last week in the random liquid tasting. All right. All right. Lime straws started out so good. I know. Oh, it's close. This is too close. Keep voting. Keep voting. Keep voting, you guys. Keep voting. Keep voting. Lockley Banana Nola. Bana, Bana Nola is taking it. I, I, I Keep voting. Keep voting. Keep voting. Keep voting. In fact, I'm gonna go run upstairs and and uh, go uh, go uh, pee real quick, and uh, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Keep voting. Keep voting. In fact, I'm gonna turn the vote music up a little bit. Oh, it's still it's not going. I'll be right back.
my gosh. Okay, how's the voting going, guys? How's it going? Good? I, I, but Bananola's winning. The Bananola's winning. I'm just going to say that it's going to win. I'm going to end this poll right now with 39. That was close. That was a close race, you guys. Bananola barely won. 39%. Pash my melons. Sorry, Bogan. You'll be back again next week. 35%. Lime Straubs. I think this is just one I'm going to have to just vape on my own. You know, I want to taste it. It looks fascinating to me, but it just gets no love. Lime Straubs. It's okay. We'll bring it back next week. You know, it'll, it'll come back next week. But let's get into this Bananola. So the thing with this Bananola is I'm going to put it in the guar box. That's where this is coming into play, Jake Scrapwood. It's a six milligram. I test fired this in here so I know it works. I wicked it so I know it works. I'm gonna drop a few drops of liquid right down the center of the ammo RBA, and then I'm gonna fill up the tank and we're gonna taste this out of a boro. It's six milligram, so I don't wanna cloud chase it out of a TM24 Pro series. I don't know what this is supposed to taste like. I think it's going to be like banana oat drips. And if that's the case, this might be the greatest liquid ever created. Yeah. I mean, that tastes like banana oat drips. Damn, that's good. Actually, here, I'm going to pull the deck out and I'm going to apply some liquid generously to the coil to the coil. This is the ammo RBA. Uh, I did a build stream for it, but I haven't done a full review for it because I haven't been using it. I need to use it. And as soon as I saw Jake Scrapwood send me, I don't know, the best boro I've ever had in my life, guar, odorous, boro, glows in the dark, I thought the ammo needs to go in there. The ammo needs to go in here. So that's where it ended up. I think the airflow is going to be sick. I think it's going to taste good. I like uh, that this doesn't have a door on the front. That makes me really happy. Uh, yep. It's a DNA. Uh, let's see. Uh, 30 watts. No, no. Oh, it is. It's reading a 0.5. Oh, 0.5, 30 watts might be just fine. Is that too much? Is that too much? Am I that out of practice right now? Oh, no. Oh, no. Dude, this tastes good. You know what this kind of tastes like? And I hate to say it, it kind of tastes a little boule bolu ish It's a little boule. It's got that like hyper sweet banana flavor with a little bit of like oat drips. I did, I'm sorry, I closed the poll. Uh, the, clo the poll's closed. Uh, Lackley Bananola one. It was dripping all over me. These 60 mil bottles are terrible. They're hard to squeeze. Ugh. Especially with my bad hand. All right. Well, we got it filled up. It's like 85% filled up. Um, now, I just need a drip tip. Let's see. Will you work? Not quite. Okay. Will you work? Not quite, damn it! God damn it! You'll work. Not all the way. Okay, okay, Jake Scrapwood, okay. Here, let's try this one. Boosh. Well, would you just look at that? I feel like I got liquid on my hands. I hate that feeling. Hate that feeling. Yep. Type 2 drip tip. 
I mean, let's 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 go. Let's drop down. Let's drop down to the up close here, so we can uh, really appreciate this. Oh, oh no, my camera's dead. Never mind. My camera battery is exhausted, and I don't have the pluggy in guy for the up close camera. So you're just gonna have to take my word for it that this is the dopest thing you've ever seen with the ammo in the front. That that, that just aesthetically hits with me. The ammo. I'm gonna give this a toot. We'll see how it goes. There's a Beecher Howard here. There's a Beecher Howard here. Of course, you're going to say that it's not the same as Boule Bolu, but I think I will be the judge of that. Okay? Save your fire emojis, Steve. Good smooth airflow. Let's see. We might need to turn this down. Let's do a... We're going to do a 0.5 at 25 watts, fire buttons on the bottom. Cheers. Bananola. Bananola. No, that's not like Boule. No. I'm sorry I said that, Beecher Howard. It's not really like Boule very much at all. (laughs) A, A little bit. I get banana ishness from it. I think we were better off at 30 watts, probably maybe even 33, 34 watts. Not, not, not like Boule Bolu. Okay, here's the thing. I'm just going to sit with this for a second. I'll be right back. I'm just going to mute my microphone like this. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to say about this e-liquid is throaty, throat, crazy throaty, large levels of throatiness, high levels of throatiness. It's a six milligram and I knew it was going to be throaty, but I almost can't taste around the throatiness. Like it's hitting me so hard in the back of my throat. Four millimeter airflow on this, six milligram, 0.5 at 35 watts. It's just throat. Like all I can taste is throat. There, this could be called throat wrecker. And it would I'd go, oh, that's accurate. That's a throat wrecker. It's a throat wrecker. It's tasty, but man, it is a throat wrecker. It tastes to me like a uh, banana cereal, like banana oat drips, like banana, like, you know, remember that cereal crackling oat brand? Okay. Does anybody remember <laughs> crackling oat brand? Old soft throat grim. Well, listen, it's six milligram. It's six milligram GTT. Six. 
But does anybody remember Cracklin Oat Bran? You didn't think it was throaty at all? I mean, compared to this three milligram, that is delicious and smooth and beautiful. This is like vaping broken glass. Yeah, banana cracklin' oat bran. It's cracklin' oat bran. It's like honey maple cereal. Honey maple cereal with like some bananas. And not like a boule sweet banana. It's like a, a very, a much more naturally banana. Am I way off base here, Beecher? Do you think it tastes like that? I think it tastes like cracklin' oat bran with some bananas in it. And it's very throaty. And it's very oaty. It tastes more oaty. Cracklin' Oat Bran rules, right, Tribal Buddha? It's a good cereal. It kind of tastes like Cracklin' Oat Bran with some banana slices in it. It's tasty. It's, it is very tasty, and I'm getting a little bit acclimated to the <laughs> harsh throatness of this. It's very sweet. Hyper sweet. I would describe it as very sweet. If I had my sweetness fence graphic, this is this is over the sweetness fence. This is over the sweetness fence. This is like this is like a vapor treats omboyo C level of sweetness. Broken glass with is good with 3% hibiscus. Oh, 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 Cicero. Yeah, that sounds like a good one. Yeah, it really loves you right in the throat. I can take softer, shorter drags and get much less throatness from it. Oh, see, now the throatiness is kind of going away. You get acclimated to throat hit, and that's something I always forget. And I used to forget that perpetually when I was first started out vaping um, because I would vape 18 milligram all day. And by the end of the day, I couldn't feel the throat hit anymore. Yeah, Anarchist Black Sweet. Yes, it is Anarchist Black Sweet. It is just hot sweetness, a little bit of throatiness. It does taste like banana cereal though. Like I'm getting that strong oaty oat drips type of crackling oat bran sensation with some banana slices in it. Honey, maple, cereal, banana. It's all coming together real nice. I think this would kick ass in something like, something more restricted lung than this. I shouldn't have put the four millimeter in here. I should pop that out and put a different airflow pin in here. I think more restricted would, would be better for this liquid. <laughs> Spot on. All broken glass needs is 5% super sweet. You sound like, you sound like Omboyosi, Michael. <laughs> super sweet solves everything. Well, this flavor is not punching up enough. Throw some super sweet in it. Oh, this strawberry is getting lost. Throw some super sweet in it. This is good. This Here's what this juice is going to become. I'm going to send this to somebody. <laughs> we're going to send this to so We're going to send that to somebody. I want more people to taste this. I'm going to send this to a patron. Crackling, th bam, you, you won, you won. That's it. That's all I needed to see, Brandon. That's all I needed to see. Crackling throat brand. You win. You're the MVP of the vlog, Brandon. You're not winning anything physical as like a gift. You're just winning, you're winning my affection. That's what you won. My, my eternal affection, Brandon. Crackling throat brand. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. Let's uh, let's go check in on the super chats and end this stream. How's it going over here in super chat land? That looks thick. Oh, got one last one from Georgia boy, Grim. That's only three and a half hours from my house. Listen, Georgia boy, if you're into these bands, you should come see some MXPX. <laughs> come see Bane and Pennywise. I don't know if you want to spend three days at like a punk hardcore fest, but. I am really looking forward 
to three days at a punk hardcore fest. I haven't been to a music fest in a really, really long time. I miss them. I miss the environment. I miss being there and being able to see like 15 bands in one day. And, you know, just I'm going to bring a extra suitcase just for merch. Like I'm buying at least 37 t-shirts at Furnace Fest, maybe some hoodies, you know, a trillion stickers, <laughs> all the vinyl that can fit in my backpack. Furnace Fest, bro. Furnace Fest. I'm really excited about it. Really excited about it. So here's the thing. We're all done here. I think we're all done here. There's nothing left to do. There's nothing left to do but uh, say thank you. And uh, it's time to it's time to shut it down like Blackpink. Okay. I can't pull myself away from this. I can't pull myself away from Paradox. Damn it, that's a good liquid. Let me take a real quick look around the room and make sure I didn't actually forget anything. Okay, let's see. What we got? Ready? MXPX, yeah, we got you. Like that. Good. Yeah. It's looking good. Don't forget anything back there. All right. Nope. We're good. We're good as heck. Oh, birthdays. Oh, my God. I forgot birthdays. 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 If there's a birthday in the chat, if there's a birthday, please let me know. Please let me know. We're not saying goodbye yet. We're singing happy freaking birthday. Uh, Sewer Rug in with the super chat. Uh, he says, yo, yo, and salutations. What a hella rad way to bring back the vlog. Looking forward to 2023 season as should all the rest of us. Yes. Sewer Rug, thank you. I like you being one of my biggest cheerleaders, man. You give me confidence that I didn't know I had before. Birthdays. Does anybody have a birthday? I got some birthdays. I got some birthdays. I got two right now. I got two birthdays. You Chasing clouds? Chasing clouds. I mean, if you've had a birthday this month, like between the last vlog and now... Your son, George, Jim Bubba's son, George. <sighs> QHB's grandson. <laughs> I guess that says grandson. Your dad's birthday. Well, we're waiting for April to sing happy birthday to your dad. You know what I mean? Sandy's birthday is today. <sighs> Sandy, happy birthday. All right. Let's sing happy freaking birthday. Richard, Richard H3D. All right. <clears throat> yeah, Mr. Chow. That's right, Mr. Chow. Forgot, I almost forgot about Mr. Cow. Oh, I wrote down Mr. Cow. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chow. Valerian Steel? Is that you, Valerian Steel? Okay. Maybe I already sung to Valerian Steel. <clears throat> Please, everybody sing with me. Like, If you don't, I feel weird and I, like, I feel awkward. <clears throat> And it helps me knowing that you're all singing along. Happy birthday to you guys. Happy birthday to them. Happy birthday, dear Super Nate, Janine Timmons, Chasing Clouds and Flavor Reviews, Jim Bubba's boy George, QHB Queen Honey Bunny's grandson, Sandy, Richard H3D, Mr. Cow, sorry, Mr. Chow, and Valerian Steele. What did I say? Janine Timmons. Janine Timmons. Happy birthday to you. Skip around the room, skip around the room, skip around the room, skip around the room. Skip, skip. If you're not skipping, you don't turn another age. You don't age, you, you, you stay the same age. If you don't skip around the room, 
then you don't get a birthday. You don't get a damn birthday. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, okay, I feel so much better about that. That really puts a bow on the vlog. Birthdays, awesome. Love it. I've already looked around the room. We got nothing else to do. So here's what I'm gonna say in closing. Let's go, here we go, 2023. You know, I got off to a little bit of a rough start in January and February, but I'm planning on having some smooth sailing, regular content, regular streams, all the damn things, defending vaping. It's the hill I'm gonna die on. Do not forget about the Brian King panel tomorrow. I think it's gonna be really, really good. I think it's gonna be really very enlightening. I'm looking forward to some of the questions he's gonna get asked. Uh, I still think this is a huge opportunity and I, and I don't want anybody to miss it. Don't want anybody to miss it. So that's happening tomorrow. I love you guys. You know, thank you for the support for the last 14 years that I've been doing this. It's crazy. This is the longest job I've ever had. It's the, the, the best job I've ever had. It's the most passionate I've ever been about any work I've ever done in my life. And I wouldn't be able to do it without the Grim Army. I wouldn't be able to do it without my yo-yoys. I wouldn't be able to do it without you guys. Seriously. So thank you. Your homework is to, that's right, Brandon, listen to MXPX. <laughs> listen to MXPX Life in General, and then we'll meet you back here on this exact YouTube channel next Thursday. We're doing some streaming on Twitch, build streams and Zelda streams and the such as. I'm As usual, I'm trying to spread myself too thin, so things uh, just fall off my radar. Like Georgia Boy, I've owed Georgia Boy a package for probably a month now, maybe a little bit longer than that. I promise it's coming. I promise it's coming. But I'm trying my best, and uh, I really do appreciate you guys I, more than I think you will ever know or realize. I mean, in all seriousness, more than you will ever know or realize. Smash that like button on your way out, and I'll say, fucking take care of yourselves, man. I love you guys. Cheese your jelly, powder your night milk, uh, milk your night cat, do all the things, and we're going to let... I don't have the the egg the, the the outro loaded in my software yet, so we're gonna listen to Omboy OC to to sing us into the evening. So, happy birthday! I love you guys. Peace out. Be excellent to each other. Literally always practice radical empathy. Peace out, guys. I believe I could fly. I believe I could touch the sky. Any time of year, dun 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 dun. I believe I can fly. <laughs>